Come on, Billy. Come on, Billy. Get those eyes. Come on, Billy. Come on, Billy. Light Get it, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, Billy. 39. Yeah. He's still going to go. Yeah, 40. running it up. All there right, we go, 40. Billy. Good All right, he's in your movie. Good job, Boom. Yeah. Oh, watch out. Go, There's kid. a bar there. There you go, kid. There we there go. There you go. <laughs> Drink a beer now. Chug a beer. Are you 21? Yeah, he's 21. He can chug a beer. There you go, Billy. You've worked hard today. It's warm, though. That yeast. Yeah. Coors Kool Aid. No, what is it? Colorado uh, Kool Aid. Colorado Kool Aid. On today's part of my take, we have future Hall of Famer Julian Edelman. Maybe he's a Hall of Famer. I don't know. We'll talk to him. Uh, we have a great interview with Jules. He's doing our podcast and our podcast alone. No big deal. Uh, we're going to talk a little death of the Super League. Uh, there was a Lakers Twitter catfishing that was ridiculous. Hot seat, cool throne. Some. Great listener FAQs, a pack show for the people, and we're brought to you by our friends at Noom. Noom, N O O M. Did I use three O's there? N O O M. Two O's. There it is. Think about everything you've ever learned about getting healthy. There's a lot of contradictory information out there, and things like that old fashioned food pyramid aren't much help. I do the hot dog diet, I don't think it's healthy. That's where Noom comes in. You know how to chew. You know how to use chopsticks, kind of, and how to fold a slice of pizza so the cheese doesn't slide off and you get that perfect first bite. But do you really know how to eat? Noom says if you want to lose weight, it's not about one thing you ate today, but how you eat in general. So check out Noom because guess what? They're going to help you with eating better, to feel better, understanding cravings, knowing how to shop, knowing no food is bad. Uh, having more energy will come with this. Enjoying exercise again, fitting better in your clothes, feeling good about your choices, improved sense of self-worth and mood, less stress. All of this with Noom, it's healthier lifestyle altogether. It's all-encompassing. It's not something that is going to fix you in two seconds. It's something that is built for the rest of your life. Long-lasting habits are important, and Noom will help train you with that. So it is based in psychology. Noom teaches you why you make the choices you do and gives you the tools to replace your habits with healthier ones. Noom's cognitive behavioral approach means you're not just losing weight. You're building the habits you need to keep it off. And Noom is forgiving because you're human. If you go off track today, you'll be back on track tomorrow. That is what Noom will do. Everyone is busy. That's why Noom doesn't demand much of your time. They only ask for 10 minutes a day. And there's a science to getting healthier. It's called Noom. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash P-M-T. Learn how to eat again with Noom. Sign up for that free trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash P-M-T. If you're ready to learn how to live healthier, sign up again at Noom today, N-O-O-M, Noom.com slash P-M-T. Do it, and let's get healthier in 2021. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Noom.com. Get healthier today with Noom.com slash P-M-T, Noom.com slash P-M-T. Today is Wednesday, April 21st, and the Super League is dead. We fucking killed that stupid son of a bitch. Play the Coldplay song. Okay, hold on. Yeah, bring that up. R.I.P. to the Super League. Oh, I thought we liked the Super League. We har we hardly knew. We liked the name. Yeah, we were. And we hopefully, were in on that. I mean, if the Premier League is smart, they'll just rebrand as the English Super League, and then nobody can ever cuck them out of that again. But yeah, basically, what it all boiled down to was there was a a group of very rich people, a bunch of billionaires who didn't think they should pay for American their own fucking stadiums, and yeah. uh, they tried they tried to organize the uh, mass exodus, and they were like. Well, what's going to happen? There's going to be a bunch of poor people that are upset. What are they going to do? Not buy our shit anymore? Turns out that over in Europe, yeah, poor people actually do that. Mm -hmm. they, they actually fight back. So um, it was 18 hours. Excuse me, 18. 18 hours. 18 hour league. And uh, I just hope Texas A&M puts it up on the side of the stadium as their victory. Yes. The um, So, Hank, you say Americans that created the Super League. Let me ask you this brain buster real quick. I'm just, uh, I'm, that's just the no, knowledge it, I learned from yeah, troops yeah. on, on Monday. In order to kill something so evil as the Super League, you have to create it. So shouldn't Americans get credit for creating something that the world can get behind and kill? Good point. Like the nuclear bomb? We did this. Mm -hmm. We created and killed it, so we deserve all the credit. Specifically this show and generally America. I would say. It's actually, it was a great test. All along, it was a test. It was, it was, an, a ex prank. It was an experiment. And guess what? 
There are 12 teams that failed. Mm-hmm. We put together this idea of a giant league that would suck the soul out of sports. No, we didn't. Marshall Henderson did. Marshall Henderson put it together, mm-hmm. and then we saw, oh, surely Manchester United and Juventus and Leeds won't join mm-hmm. this. Leeds actually did. They were they passed the test by not joining. Yeah. But then all these big teams were like, yeah, we're greedy. We're money hungry. Guess uh, what? Gobble, gobble, you gobble. guys really showed your ass because yep. you're the bad guys. You rich motherfuckers. We <laughs> beat your ass. Isn't this bad for our World Cup chances? No, it's great for World Cup chances because mm. Pusilic and uh, Dest and all the other great players that we have right now, they all just happen to be on teams that would have been in the Super League yeah. and not been allowed to play. So now guess what? USA World Cup 2022. Two. Qatar. 2022. Cut. Another great idea. That's, that's <laughs> what, <laughs> to have a, have a World Cup in the middle of the desert. That's what's so funny because we were trying to figure out with troops why FIFA was coming down on the side of the fans. And we figured it out afterwards it's because FIFA controls UEFA, the Champions League, and the Super League would have sucked all the money out of UEFA. So that's why FIFA was doing this, not because they're like some big... No. FIFA's like, listen, we're okay with letting North Korea into our tournaments, uh, but a European player that doesn't compete in the Champions League, see ya. Yeah. Now, excuse me, we have a, a bunch of slaves to go bury in Qatar. Yes. Whoa. Damn, drop the hammer on them. Sorry. Yeah, no, FIFA doesn't isn't, isn't uh, a good actor in any of this. But we did kill it. It's over. Thank God it's over. The fans, mostly from us and leading the charge, I would say. I mean, that tr- that clip from Troops on the show on Sunday had a lot of people interacting with it, had a lot of people watching it, so we got the message out there. I saw James Corden just basically watched it and then did his own, mm-hmm. like, Troops. He basically... He just basically did a cover band of troops. Didn't, no big deal. Didn't drop the M-bomb like troops did, though. No, he, he did not. That. No, he did not. Do you guys see the World Cups during football season? Yeah. No, because uh-huh. they did it doing it in a fucking desert. That's They're, crazy. They had to create these huge stadiums with air conditioning. It's one of the dumbest things ever. You know what? I bet <laughs> you that there's going to be 24 hours of football that take place then. Yes. You, you're gonna, Soccer uh, and like football. 3 a.m. Football, football. Football, football yeah. and football yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, mm-hmm. We'll have to do a marathon for that. This is me just... Writing checks. I don't I, want to cash later. I, I did learn that there are more players on the U.S. men's team than just Pulisic. So that was a win for uh, soccer awareness in America. So credit to uh, the Super League for doing that. I think it was all good. All good came from this. We all got together. There's nothing like a common enemy that everyone can just get pissed off at. So, uh, yeah, job well done. Again, mostly by us, but mm-hmm. job well done. Uh, I'll the, take credit for it. I'd, I'd yeah. say that like the two... Biggest biggest successes of this podcast have been, one, bullying Nyquist the horse off Twitter, Mm -hmm. and then two, ending the European Super League. Yes, there it is. One and two. So um, that one, just like easy as could be, moving on. But there is something that popped up in the back of my head. When when this was all put to bed like so quickly, they're going to try this again in like two years. Yeah, but we'll beat the fuck out of it again. They're going to learn from what happened this time. And they're going to do it like in the dead of night. Yeah, but we found They'll out. They'll probably that, do it during the Olympics, like when Putin invaded the Crimea. But we found out they're bitches. They are bitches. So we'll just fuck them up again. They are bitches. We will fuck them up again. The when they come at bitches. us, we will fuck them up again. Um, all right, so the other news we had was Lakers Twitter had a catfish problem, which is we were, I think we were long overdue for a good catfishing. Uh, and it was to, to catch you up, which is really, it's inconsequential, but it's also very funny. Uh, basically there was a, a female or we don't know the real identity of the person. There was an someone who was pretending to be a, uh, attractive woman who was very much into the Lakers did podcast, uh, appearances, possibly faked cancer, then possibly faked her own abduction, which is the no, no, you can't, you can do one or the other. You can't do both. And, uh, was exposed. And, uh, again, I just love any catfishing story online because it's actually incredible that it doesn't happen more often when you think about, like, where can you find horny dudes that if you just talk a little bit of sports, they will simp for you forever. Oh, yeah, the internet. I think it probably does happen a lot. We just find out about it yes. when it gets caught. People are just really good at pretending to be women online, I think. My idea was... Laker Daniela is Laker what Laker Daniela <laughs> should be out there. Yeah. My idea was... Why isn't anyone – so, like, it, all these stories are pretty much the same arc where it's, like, someone fa- – you know, someone creates an account, puts an avatar up there that's not them, gets in in a community, and then gets, like, one or two close friends, gets exposed, deletes their account. I don't know why – why aren't people buying penny stocks of this account right now? Because what if 
Like, there's got to be a one in a million shot that the catfisher actually is the chick. Uh-huh. And if you How start white knighting now when everyone's going at her, okay. you're truly the, like, yo, are these guys bothering you online guy? Yeah. No, and, I, and what's the worst thing that happens? Nothing. You, you end wrong. up with you, a you no. You end up with much. a fucking dude who loves the Lakers. Yeah, you can hang a buddy, out with a yeah, buddy to watch right. the games with. Yeah, who I mean, you could sext with and, and jerk off and, to. And very worst case scenario, you look like a good guy for being like I'm the last person right. that will defend the honor of this right. probably dude. You know what? Dudes need white knighting too. Yeah. I don't know why that gets reserved exclusively for females. Like every now and again, it would be nice if somebody white knighted for us. Dude supporting dudes. I always uh, I, I say that I. Uh, when was oh when I when I uh, texted Titus our f- good friend Mark Titus because he had a nice tan I was like dude you got a sick tan like we should do that more often yeah, to each other dudes rock yeah go tanning no just be oh. like hey you look good yeah. like hey you look good bro hey. why don't I just say it I can't I'm looking at you right now I don't I can't say it but if you were looking good I would tell you you look good watch this Jake looks nice today don't Jake you can't look at him while you say it Jake, he's not wearing glasses Jake Jake looks nice today ew uh, yeah. Ew. yeah. <laughs> Hot <laughs> mean. I'd like to not as much gel today. Oh, it's oh natural. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I like. We I like, like it natural. I like my. I got uh, a button down for more tonight. More fuzz for the love. Yeah. yeah, I like my my PMT Sports Biz guys with less makeup on. What is tonight? <laughs> uh, Luger's for stool bench mob. Ah. Oh. They've the ended. Coming. They're done. They ended the podcast, so they're doing a no. big farewell. You know, season one. Rip. <laughs> well, we're still doing once a week. Thursday releases. You know what Go we ahead. should do? Sorry. We should hire Vivian. Yeah, it just in the well, in the chance wait, that she's real. Yes, that's and what she's I'm like she got abducted. That's she's what I'm got saying. cancer. She might. Hopefully, she survives this ordeal. In the chance that she's real, we should hire her to be on the show in, to be our our Lakers stats girl. If it turns out that Vivian is actually really Vivian, she is our official Lakers correspondent. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, like there, there's there. It's in the finance world. It's a distressed asset. We're yep. buying distressed assets in the hope that we can turn them around. Undervalued. So we 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 buy the distressed asset. It's one in a million shot that she's actually who she says she is. But if she is, she'll remember that we were the ones who had her back. Uh, she's this, a Kevin Euclid. She's like, if we're doing Moneyball, right. she gets on base. Right. Doesn't matter how she gets there. Um, so the the other part of the story, there was a couple other funny elements. Kevin Durant is now the king of Twitter. Uh, so he was on Twitter spaces, uh-huh. like getting the breakdown. I Kevin Durant, we, we have given him a lot of shit. Uh, we've called him the Triple B many times. And... I just think that he has persisted so much on online as being just an online dude that he's won everyone over who's like, oh, you're so lame yeah. for being online all the time. And he just stayed online. And now it's like, no, he's cool because he's like us. I'm removing the mayor of Twitter handle title to from Chrissy Teigen, giving it to Kevin Durant because Chrissy shows up and she just like tweets and then hopes that she gets all her friends to retweet her and tell, tell her how great and funny she is. Yes. Kevin Durant actually engages right. with everybody online and he engages with like every single Twitter development. Like the people, you know how sometimes you get a notification on Twitter. It's like, Hey, we're rolling out this new feature. Give it a shot. All those go to Kevin Durant and right. he tries them out immediately. Right. Fills out the forms, sends them back. He's on spaces. Yeah. He's running. He's probably the, the biggest power user of Twitter spaces. He is the official mayor of Twitter. As yes. As I'm concerned. He is. And then was, the, was he catfished by it? No, Had he was. He, he was jump. He jumped into a Twitter spaces and just asked for like a rundown by a guy who there was a guy, unfortunately, who did like kind of fall in love with this chick who's not a chick. Uh, and then also Taylor Rooks jo- jumped in and everyone like. The, the, what they've made Vivian out to be is what Taylor Rooks is in real life, and they all like free, she was trending just because she went into a Twitter space, which was hilarious. Uh, Ice Cube's son uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr. he retweeted being like five find Vivian. Uh-huh. Markeith Morris did that. The whole internet was like whole Lakers internet, and it was just a very I, again catfishing stories. I feel like we haven't had a good one in a while. So, uh, and then she deleted her account, never to be seen So, again. the person in the pictures of Vivian, I know that a few of them were photoshopped, kind of like the college admissions thing. She was, like, playing water polo at some yes. point. But the background's always changed for her. But it is a real person, right? The, the individual yes. exists. Yes. Whoever that person is should say, should take on Vivian's personality right now. It, it should be like Doug's. Right. It should be like Doug's. Vivian should see that there's a brand built around her already. She should just learn everything everything she can about the Lakers right now. Hop online and boom, she's immediately accepted she's as She's there. Expert. She's yep. ready to roll. I, I like that. So she's kind of made like a she's almost uh 
what is it? What do you call it, Billy? What do you call it? Like butterfly and the moth and the the larva. What what is it called? Metamorphosis. Yeah, there it is. She's mm-hmm. someone can hop into the larva sack. Yes. and come out a beautiful butterfly, which is not a pun because her name is Butterfly. Her Twitter handle. I didn't do that on purpose. Okay, but it is. I just realized that. But what is it? Butterfly. It's Butterfly four two four or something. Okay, so. It's actually remarkable that you're able to build such a strong brand with such a lame handle. Yeah. Well, I she, did gain, she did gain 16,000 followers solely off of the fact that she got fake abducted and had fake cancer. That's true. So, I mean, she also was attractive, which helps. Yes. yes. I, you know what? All right. Here's how I feel about the whole catfishing thing, because everybody online, to a certain extent, pretends to be somebody that they're not. Right? We're, we're all losers. Is that we're too, all losers. Is that too deep for yes, 420? We're all losers. It's the fact. Like, everyone puts forth what they want to put forth online. And so we're all just catfishing This is everybody. why celebrity, yeah, worship is so stupid. It's yeah. the old, like, I can't believe this celebrity couple got divorced. Like, oh, well, I can because right. they had a marriage. Like me, big that cat, happens. Me, Big Cat, and Hank, we don't actually write any of this show. We're just the beautiful faces just to suck you guys in. Jake writes everything. Jake writes With Bubba. Jake right when Jake's wearing his glasses, he writes everything. Yeah, he's, he's our like, head writer. I know what we can do with these oh, guys. Oh, Jake, I remember what I was going to ask you. Chet Holmgren. Yeah. Gonzaga got another lanky white guy. Surely this will take him over the top. We'll see. I think that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <Number one laughs> I, thought, yeah. I thought Jake broke that news yesterday because he tweeted out Chet Holmgren to Gonzaga. And I was like, no. Jake, are you breaking news? He's like, no, I'm just watching his live stream and Chet, reporting. <laughs> and also, Chet Holmgren is not like, if we're just going name alone, no. that's a fucking country music, like a failed country music act in Nashville. Yeah. That's I not mean, a number one pick. Number one recruit to Gonzaga. I would say, yeah, yeah like B-list country musician slash uh, probably the, the best used car salesman in Columbus. Yeah. From Minnesota. Come on down see Chet. What are they doing? What's Mark Few doing in Minnesota? Jalen Suggs. He's just stealing yeah. the whole state. Yeah. Damn. So, should be interesting. Ch- it, did, it did bother me a little. I, I, I say that uh, jokingly about Chet Holmgren simply because I, I saw it. And, like, if Wisconsin was at his peak as a, as a program – that's that's a we should get a guy like that a fucking tall lanky like dude Kaminsky kind of guy from, I from guess Minnesota was especially with reciprocity yeah, right exactly it should be should be us um so what else do we have the uh, oh I saw a crazy stat I wanted to throw out there because we respect credit to us by the way for getting ahead of the uh, respecting Steph more the night before he went for forty nine that felt good mm-hmm. but he is insane he's off he's off the charts right so now. yeah it's kind of progressed over the course of the last week it's been like Steph is unreal. That's yep. what it started with. Then it's Steph is insane. Mm-hmm. Now Steph is unconscious. Steph is unconscious and uh, maybe MVP, but not. I'm going to start the train on that. Do it. Steph for MVP. Do it. Win horse would get – well, no, let's see how many games he played. I think Steph Curry Depends should be the most m- valuable player of the league. If he didn't play enough games, win horse would get really mad at you. Um, yeah, he, okay, let's do it. No one's ever done what Steph's done. No one has ever done what Steph's done. It's true. What is it, 73s in the last – uh, 10 games, You cannot tell the story of the NBA in the year 2021 without mentioning Steph Curry. That's a fact. It also just shows how stupid we are as sports fans and how, like, in the moment. Because <laughs> I did, in a, of course, it's just one person on Twitter, but I do think there is a sect of people who are like, Steph can't do it alone. And you're like, dude, in 2015, he was the best player on a championship team that won 67 games. And the next year, he was the best player on a team that won 73 games. Right. They're just saying, like... like I think he can... Do, he, he obviously has help, but he can be the best player on a great team. Right. They're saying, also, like, if you took away all of Steph's good players, then his team wouldn't be as good. Yeah, right. That, that's probably just a fact. One of, one of the best. One yeah. of the best arguments out there. Maybe we don't respect Clay enough. Maybe we don't respect Joel Embiid enough, either. Dude, Joel Embiid's show. insane. I... The one thing about Joel Embiid, though, he's so good, and he makes the ball look so small in his hands, uh-huh. and it lo- it looks like he's playing on like a mini hoop because he's so large and so like incredibly skilled. The one thing with Joel Embiid, though, is every time he hits the ground, I'm like, that's it. Yeah, it's over. Which is actually, I think that's contributing to the Joel Embiid for MVP conversation. The fact that he hasn't gotten severely injured this year. Yeah, it's he's like he's figured it out. He is at a level though where he just dominate. Like when he has the ball, it's just okay. He's either going to score, or he's going to make something happen mm-hmm. every single time, and he does. He is just an enormous, enormous human mm-hmm. being. Are Joel Embiid catching the ball 
when he was in the outfield, caught the home run ball, and then he hit, took a picture of his hand holding it, and it just looked it looked like a uh, one of those uh, Cadbury cream eggs. Yeah, Andre the holding. Giant. Yes, Andre the Giant holding his yeah, yeah. Cadbury yeah. cream yeah. eggs just right in your hand. <laughs> yep, the perfect the perfect spot in the in the the in perfect the palm analogy, of your hand. Perfect analogy, cousin. <laughs> yeah, okay. By the way, hand up. Yeah, I fucked up with cousin. Why? Because I. I should have said nephew. Snoop always says nephew, yes. not cousin. Yes. And cuz instead of like. No, cuz still doesn't sound great. But, but cuz sounds says, better than cousin. He also says cuz. Cuz, yeah. He doesn't and say he has cousin. said cousin, but it was also the delivery. I just don't know if anyone can deliver Snoop Dogg except Snoop Dogg. No cap. <laughs> right. <laughs> he throws around Unk, too. Yeah, Unk. He actually Pretty says much every relative. Any other family member. Yeah. 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 Here you go, cousin. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> what, my brethren? Listen, there are some shots that you wish you could take back in life, but you know what? Shoot or shoot. Yes. Steph Curry. You got to keep going. Sometimes I have Sometimes I have weeks where I'm off. Sometimes I'm unconscious. Yes. The uh, All right, so the other thing. Oh, uh, the the stat I wanted to say that, that, we, that I wanted to throw out there because it fucking blew my mind. Uh, ben Fox tweeted this. F-A-W-K-E-S. I said that like Fox, the network. Like, uh, like the guy that overthrew Parliament? Guy Fox, yeah. Guy Fox. Um, Dodgers have been favored in 96 straight games dating back to 2019 season finale versus the Nationals. They've been favored in 134 of the last 136 games. That's stupid. It is stupid. That actually is not respect the Dodgers. It means that people respect the Dodgers too much. Too Way too much. Way too that much. That tells me that they're overvalued. That's insane. 134 out of the last 136 games. Is it profitable? Do you know? I don't know. I'd That's have to crazy. They still, isn't that insane? They still haven't won a, a real ring, though. That's true. They are really, really good, and it's not. Whatever. It's you know what? I feel like whenever a team's really, really good out west, you can just be like, "We'll deal with that later." Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Like, who cares? Because for whatever reason, you always think we won't have to face them till like at least the second leg of the playoffs. Well, and it's just like I, you know, like the games are on at late, late at night. I don't really see them dominating. Like, who cares? We'll figure it out later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else before we get to hot seat, cool throne? Anything? My Anything? fantasy team lost. Fuck. I'm one, sorry. One and one. Seam head express. What happened this week? Just uh, you know, it's it was only a, one game a week. Had some COVID issues this week. Actually, I take that question back. You don't, yeah, don't, you don't strike care. that don't, from the record. Don't, don't yeah, care. Strike yeah. that from the record. Don't. You just gotta. You gotta like ask a. Uh, I shouldn't like have. A, I shouldn't have said. I mean, I'm waiting for. <laughs> I shouldn't have said Mon, Mondesi. Yeah. Mondesi don't to care. get off the IL. <laughs> Look what you did, Hank. I know. That's it's just unreal. Like this guy, <laughs> he hasn't even he hasn't even swung a bat yet. Where'd you pick him? I think I took him like fifth round. Oh, sixth that's round. good value. That's, it was great. It was great value, value actually. Yeah, but you need that to come through. I needed to come through, but it's a long season. A best ability is availability. That's absolutely. And he's right. not stone out hands. there for you. Got to keep the stone. Yeah, hands. I'm not. I'm not papering out on this. I'm not man ewing. So wait, what happened this week? So I actually got really, <laughs> really badly beat. I think I lost like one, eight, and one. But it still counts this as only week. one loss. Yeah, it counts as one loss. So, so who cares? We're one and one of the season. We're keeping, you know, just keeping things level for right now. We're lurking. Yeah. Who cares? I always one say loss. if you're, if you're, you know, five games back at the All Star break, you can make a run. Yeah, absolutely. There it is. Um, all right, let's get to hot seat, cool throne. It's brought to you by our friends at Zip Recruiter. That's why hiring can feel like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. When you post a job on ZipRecruiter, it gets sent out to over 100 top job sites with one click. Then ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people with the right skills and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply. In fact, ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. It's no wonder over 2.3 million businesses have come to ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. So while other companies overwhelm you with way too many options, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack, and right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. Once again, remember to go to this unique place, ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire, ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. Whether you're looking for people to hire, whether you're trying to find a new job, ZipRecruiter has it all. So go check it out, ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. Okay, Hank, hot seat, cool throw. You want me to go? Uh, yeah, 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 do it. Okay. Uh, I feel like the expression, uh, nature is healing may be overused sometimes, yep. but mm -hmm. last night I thought it was extremely appropriate. Foul ball guy is my hot seat. Crowds, fans are back in baseball. Nature is healing. There was a home run hit and I think it was the Phillies game 
and foul ball guy went sprinting. Like, it landed in the seats. Foul ball guy, you just see him come in the frame, absolutely hauling ass, and as he gets the ball, he fell. And then the clip that I saw, it fell before you even saw if he got the ball. Like, it seemed like he was, like, he fell, and then he was reaching, and the clip ended. Uh, but hot seat foul ball guy, he's I, clearly not, you know, oh, he's been off for a year. He's I not agree. in form. Ah, he's slipping. He's falling. You I don't think, even know if he got the ball. No, the hustle's he's still just, there. Yeah, the, the hustle's hustle. there, but he's he's rusty. Yeah, he's but, not, like, well, well, mid-season prime foul ball well, guy. Well, is well, on, is, well, first of all, well, let me first of all, prime time foul ball guy is catching right there. that mm-hmm. ball. Let me stop you right there. doesn't need to run for it. Let me stop you right there. What? Was it was it a foul ball he was going for? No, but he's oh, that's not, home run he, ball guy. That's home run ball he guy. He doesn't catch you. foul His ball. His name he is foul ball home guy. Home run ball. No, he cat he <laughs> catfished you into thinking he was a foul ball guy. Yeah, think he's, he's, ball he's guy. a home run ball guy. Yeah. And he, he texted me this morning. He said, "Yo, I need to redeem myself after last night's debacle <laughs> yeah, in Philly." See, he knows Did you see knocks. my spectacular he, fail. Let's hit up a game. Yankees, Phillies. We'll do it. For YouTube and get hundreds of thousands of views. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Sounds lucrative. There's, like, there's one person here that should go to a game with him. Frank the Tank. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's. Do you think you can get him in position? Uh, yes. Imagine. Yeah. Imagine. Frank could, yes. Frank would maybe turn around all his luck. It would have to be like it would be like in the Sandlot where Benny the Jet put the guy in the outfield <laughs> uh-huh. and was like, "Stand here, I'm going to hit it into your glove." He could do that during batting practice. Yes, well, absolutely. Taking, he could put Frank in a position to make a catch, and then and maybe even bring the like alternate jerseys, flip Frank out in and out of jerseys to get the the players throwing him balls. I yeah. I just love foul ball guy. Like I just hope that some like in twenty years I'm turning on a game and he's just fleling around in the outfield, <laughs> just, just grabbing balls. Like yeah. it's great. It's perfect. It so, was so nice to see you. Just it was see great. Him, just see him hauling fucking ass. Right. Him and Marlins man. I back lo- to back. I love seeing the hustle out of him. Because you can control your effort, you can control your preparation. He did both. It's just a matter of getting the reps back before he starts catching those home right. runs again. I'm sure about right. that. I think about that episode probably more than any other episode we've ever done. I mean, just it's because an Marlon's man called me and was like threatening to sue me. This is before we were friends. This was our first interaction with him, and I think the reaction people were like, "Fuck Marlon's man!" After that episode, and he called me the next day like threatening all this legal act. It was one of the mm-hmm. wildest. We should have him back of on. Of all the people we've had on, it was one of the wildest like post interviews of all time. Yeah. Uh but yeah, foul, foul ball guy got to get back on his game. My cool throwing we we mentioned it earlier, but guys named Chet, uh White Boy Summer and then the number one recruit going to Gonzaga and uh-huh. guys Dave. Dave has a new season of videos coming out. Dave has a new Little season of videos in, coming out. In federal June. crime. Yes. Yes, that is a federal crime. <laughs> no, June, June. Season two. Oh, little Dicky show. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, that's, well, wait. That's also that's federal same. crime. Yeah, federal crime. <laughs> uh, I've, that's the show I've been meaning to get around to watching because everybody that I know watches the show and absolutely loves it. It's really, really good. I'm gonna watch Dave. That's my that's my resolution. There you go. By the time I speak to you on next Wednesday's show, within the next week, I will have started Dave. Wow, that's powerful. I, you know what? I'm gonna say it. Are you gonna do it's it? Freaking. You're a hero. It's freaking. Oh, no, like that, dude. You just. You sure you're gonna sign yourself you up? Got for that? I'm big into setting goals because I heard the, I heard it's the, freaky the stuff. fine language there. You didn't say you were gonna finish it. You said you were start, gonna it. start it. No, it's important <laughs> to set goals. Big Cat, there's an art to this. Here, here's two things That's you have to do. Heroes move. One, set goals. Boom, check that off. Checked off one goal already. Mm-hmm. Two, set attainable goals. Yes. Three, start watching a show on Netflix within a week. Yeah. I, I'm going to be able to fulfill on two out of those three already and three out of three by next week. Um, no, I'm, I was going to try. I was going to say I would join you, but I don't think I, I don't want to fail. You can do it. I No, nah, I don't want to fail. I already, I already set my goal last week or yesterday of saying I'm going to do a respect list once a week, but maybe monthly, but also probably yearly. But, cool. but you said you didn't say when you were going to do it. Right. You're going to start doing it so it could start at any point. And it could be – yeah, it could be yearly. You know what the best goal is of all time if you just don't have any when you're down objectives in hockey? No, in soccer is the most dangerous. Got it. Yeah, yeah. If you say, um, I'm going to start drinking more water. Yeah. And then if you just have like a glass of water, boom. Done. Checkmate. Other cool throw Jake just showed me that his phone wallpaper is a picture of him and Marlins, man. I mean, huh. him and foul ball guy. <laughs> it's not my wallpaper. I have a picture with him. Let me see. Let me pull it back up. You like went and found him? No, I saw him on the subway. And you <laughs> were like, hey, I'm big fan. videos were cool. That's even that's cooler than was this pre you barstool? Stadium. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> God damn it, I love you, Jake. That's yeah. so perfect. Yeah, you're like, dude, I watch your, I watch yeah, your I videos. Yeah, I, I like them. Like, I like the tips that you had on getting the foul balls. Well, not the tips, just like the behind the scenes stuff. Right, but there were a lot of tips in it. Yeah, there are a lot when of. When he tips. does the when he when he when he drops his glove, 
that's like attached oh, with to string. The string and he pulls and he it up. Uh-huh. And he, I think he puts a water bottle in between the gloves so it like traps it. Something that's like nice. that. Yeah. Really no nice. one in the world. This is the thing. Like I used to be like, oh, foul ball guy. He's annoying. Uh, he's, you know, elbowing people. And then I realized something. You respect greatness. He's number one on the respect list. You will never see a foul ball guy again like foul ball guy. No. Ever. Do you think he'll probably have a kid just to get more foul balls? Yeah. Just to bring to the games and, and teach his son or daughter how to get more foul. Which one do you think I he should wants loan more, him my kid. A son or a daughter to <laughs> just as a prop to collect more balls. Mm. I feel like a daughter wearing like a full kit. Yeah. Maybe a seeing eye dog. Puppy, foul ball puppy. <laughs> yeah, compassionate, like whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, he'll probably get into that. Yeah, is that it, Hank? Good job, Hank. Hold on, great job. Thanks. Uh, my hot seat is golf, and the way that people are paid out for winning golf tournaments. Oh, because there's a. Uh, I'm probably going to absolutely butcher the explanation of this, but there's a bonus structure that's going to reward the biggest stars in golf. That do- it doesn't matter how you finish in the tournament for that weekend. It matters how much fan engagement and sponsor engagement you drive. So it's basically great for Max. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's the Max Homer rule. Wait, so we can make them money? We can make them money they by driving pay us ga- back? and they could potentially pay us back. Whoa. So that's my cool throne was going to be us because we can Whoa. play both sides of this coin Whoa. very easily. Whoa. Uh, so they're saying in, in the explanation, it said it's going to be given to players that drive engagement like Tiger Woods. So Tiger's probably going to be collecting checks even if he's not playing. And then uh, they said... I mean, there was a lot of engagement a, a month ago. Yes, tons of it. Yeah. It, his driving ability was just... It made Bryson DeChambeau look awful. Uh, and then Ricky Fowler, he's on the list too. I, they're really disrespecting Max Respect by, not, by okay. not mentioning it. So we need to get... This sounds like uh, a scheme that will probably get us in trouble, but will be lucrative for a short period of time. I don't think you can get in trouble for defrauding the PGA Tour. I'm going to agree. I think that public sentiment would be The way be on you said it, I, I'm going to totally agree. I, uh, you, you, the way you put that, I mean, the entire is correct. the entire sport is based on the honor system, right? So if we just sign a card at the end of every show, or like underneath, if we put a picture up on our Twitter accounts saying like we certify that we are not gaming this system, they have to trust us unless there's video evidence. And I think we've actually had this conversation with our lawyer, Mr. Portnoy, who's that's another guy we got to get on again because it's been a while, but. It's is it a scheme or a fraud if you just admit it out loud? Because we're telling everyone what we're gonna do. Yeah, we've we've asked him that question. I think he and said as a lawyer, no. He, I think he said go ahead. Yeah, he's he's like go ahead, but I want nothing to do with it. Right, which means really go ahead so and slide in, you know, pass us some money in the back. We are absolutely going to do everything that we can to get Max Homa this extra money because Bro- Brooks will do it on his own. Yes, I'm sure Max might need some help from us. Yes, wait, we're going to be nicer to Max. Yeah, yeah, meh. Max, I think Max is Max likes where he's at. He likes the little fucking ball busting, you know? You remember, like, this was probably 10, 15 years ago when they talked about doing the original Super League, which was the Tiger Tour? Mm-hmm. They were saying Tiger could just break away from the PGA Tour, right. host his own tournaments. This is kind of like that, but for John Daly. Yeah. Like, John Daly could show up. And collect all this money think, every single week. I think he still doesn't. He still have an exemption at like wherever he won the. Did he win a U.S. Open? No, he won a, maybe. Did he win? Yeah, a US he won Open? a U.S. Open. Right? I think it was Brit Britain. Scott, oh, Scotland, he's got. Whatever. He has some exemption PGA? somewhere. I want to say that he. I think it was the British Open. Uh, Kyrgyz a Finbarm rat. He'll also be another Happy one. Rat. That's the guy yeah. you guys want on the show. He's yes. the one who. Yeah, he's going to be making a lot of money off the if. Like each vape, you know how they have it's like Britain or Scotland. We wish that they would it. show how much each putt's worth at the end of a tournament. Every time, what's his name again, Jake? I think it's pronounced Affy Barnett. Nah, no, Nineteen ninety-five Open I Championship I think, at St. Positive. Andrews. Okay. Affy Barnett. Every time he blows a sick cloud, they should show us how much money in like PGA Tour buzz cash or whatever they're going to call it. He's yes, making. Yes. Yes. Two majors. Two majors. What was the other one? Ninety-one PGA Championship at Kirkwood Stick. And 95 Open Championship at St. Andrews. That's what I was thinking of. Hmm. So maybe he, yeah. So maybe we, he gets a, I don't know how the exemptions work. I kind of like that idea that like, like Freddie Couples is going to be playing the Masters forever. Um, all right. My hot seat is uh, my favorite kid show, Bluey, which I have talked about a couple times before. Uh, if you're not watching it, if you have kids and you're not watching it, well, you're stupid. But you actually might be on, you might be good because there was an article that uh, kids cartoon Bluey cr- criticized for not having disabled, queer, poor, gender diverse, or dogs of color, prompting important debate. Aren't they blue healers? Yeah. It's dogs. It's a show about cartoon dogs. Are the dogs? It's a show about cartoon dogs. Okay. 
and they it's don't they show don't have any cartoon. dogs of color. It's show about cartoon dogs. Okay. No poor dogs. It's a show about cartoon dogs. It's crazy. Can dogs be rich? I. It's actually yeah. There was that yeah. There was that one Chinese lady that left uh, all, of her like, money. all of her money to yes. her dog. I just, I just love that idea that it's like, well, I wasn't represented at Bluey. Uh huh. So well, people, none of us were because we're not dogs. It's a show about dogs. <laughs> cartoon fake dogs. It's eight sh- eight minutes an episode. This is actually probably the world's richest dog right here. The Doge. Yeah, Dogecoin. Although yeah, Doge Day. I was I was sold a bill of goods about Doge Day today. What? Everybody was just saying Doge is going to go to the moon today. And I've been, I packed my bags. So I, I could ready. never see that happening. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, and then my cool throne is the Bengals jerseys because they didn't really change them. Yeah. That I, was the, the lamest. Like, hey, look at this. Like, what? I can't. Can't look at really? Joe Burrow's fucking scars is really the, the oh, takeaway. Did from, you see that from, quote, though, he had? Holy quote. shit. I got to find it. It was awesome. This is a, oh, damn, that is a huge scar. Whoa. Uh, he is, it's the anti-Trevor Lawrence uh, quote. Mm-hmm. Not to bash Trevor Lawrence, who we're rooting for, but he said, if I died yeah. without scars, that just means I did nothing worth fighting for. I think that that's was in Braveheart, too. pretty fucking cool. Battle scars. Damn, that's fucking insane. That thing, you got to get a tattoo on that. Yeah. Cover or that up. The the jerseys, like on the socks, they should have a tiger stripe where his scar is. Yeah. Add an extra stripe to it. Yeah, but the jerseys were not different. They really. weren't really. I actually think that since it's well known that the Bengals' ownership is the the uh, thriftiest, shall we say. Yeah. They're the most uh, careful with their money mm-hmm. of any of the major franchises. And they uh, they probably just took the old uniforms and had somebody remove some of the stitching. Yep. And they're like, look, it's a minimalist. We deconstructed the old jerseys yep. to give it a cleaner feel. I w- the only thing that I, I got out of this, uh, the Bengals jerseys, is I think the NFL in the next two years, I'm going to call my shot, is going to change the one shell only rule so that there can be multiple different helmets all year long, and it's going to be sick. That yeah. will be a big time like fans win with all the cool helmets. I agree. Because like that, the, well, the Bengals all whites, like those need white helmets. Yes. They have, they have to It'd have It'd be them. amazing. Wait, Billy, what kind of tiger is that? Bengal. The be- what? What? The white tiger? <laughs> Siberian? They're white Bengals. They're Siberian <laughs> tiger? They're white Bengal tigers. Yeah. White, really? Albino. I don't think they're, tigers. there might not be able to there have There should be more tigers Siberian of color, tigers. I think, in yes, the NFL. That's true. If you're a tiger and you watch... Edo is probably watching it and being like, what the fuck? Yeah. I might be crazy, but I think it's the NFLPA that doesn't want the multiple helmets for breaking in new helmets. Either way, I'm just calling my shot. They'll probably figure yeah. out a way. Yeah. I, and I think that if uh, it was going to make enough money for the NFL, Roger Goodell could have figured out a way to spin zone Switch the whole, the like, it's not a safe There'd thing. There would be so many really, cool ways. Never really cool stopped helmets. them in the past. Yeah. yeah. All right, Billy, your hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is Joey Bosa for being extremely horny on TikTok. Ooh. He was seen uh, using a massager on himself on TikTok and with a TikTok model, Jenna Berman. I think it's his girlfriend. Yeah. What do you mean a massager? He was literally just like using one of those. Magic wand? The Theraguns? Yeah. Oh, uh, on his, so what's so horny about that? He was using it on. It was just a really awkward video. Billy, can you describe his girlfriend for us? Was it hot? Were you turned on? No, it was Describe just Joey Bosa. Looks like a very respectful person. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What? what cool about throne. Makes I don't. Think I don't that. understand why this is a hot seat for Joey Bosa. Me neither. Because he was he was being a weirdo and using the massager on himself. Okay. So you'd rather him be Erotically. like a, a certain quarterback and go out there and pay somebody else to do it? No. Anyway, I'm all in favor of robots taking masseuses' jobs if you're an NFL no, player. No, he was. <laughs> It was a funny video. Look it up. Uh, my cool throw Look it up. <laughs> is cool records getting broken. The underwater bench press record was broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's basically this Russian dude just took a bench press, put it underwater, and repped it out uh, 77 times. Hell yes. The previous record of 62 times. How much weight? Only 110 pounds. Wait. But does that weigh more underwater? Yeah, no, less. Weightless. So I'm like... That's more of just a holding your breath thing. Right, like a Navy SEAL. So I'm kind of, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, I could do that. I could break that record. In well, worst case scenario, you I'm drown. Just, exactly. Fill ashamed. up the studio with water and test it. Exactly. Yeah. I think we could probably find you some sort of a, a tank 
to practice weightlifting. That would be sick. That break the record. Yes. I'm going to find more of these dumb records. And let's break them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Summer plans. Okay. And uh, so you, yeah. you of all people. <laughs> yeah. You need more plans. Uh, <laughs> well, I have no plans this summer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Jake, your hot seat, cool throne. Hot seat is frozen yogurt. Uh, what? Demi Lovato. Oh, too yeah. Soft. She uh, is not happy with the positioning of the toppings at a certain shop, and she called it triggering and harmful of the positioning of low-fat and low-sugar options near the checkout counters. And well, then she I, took it to Instagram. I don't understand. She, like, I think... I have no idea what's happening in the world. No. Like, what, what is what what is this show... What's going on? Yeah, I mean, this is a, this you know is a real like, story. Yeah, I don't understand this. Uh, yeah. I think it was that she wanted to be, like, diabetes... Ice cream. Yeah, but she apologized. Oh, okay. She, so we're all good. No yeah, problem. we're all good. Fine. Good. I'll move on. I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not gonna carry that weight around. I did get Halo Top last night. That's so good. I, I so was, guilt free. I was right? wondering if I was if that's problematic. I okay. I you don't know. know. I Halo I top? think it's disgusting. I mean, fair. I, it's like the most like you're almost eating ice cream, but you're totally not. Correct. You know what it was. I saw the video that Big Cat tweeted out of the waffle yeah, dude, being turned into that? the ice cream sundae. And I watched uh, it and I was like, I really want an ice cream sundae right now. And then I went to the ice cream s- store's website on Seamless. And I was like, you know what? Um, I have a, an opportunity with a click of a button to not do as much damage to, yes. my, to my six pack that I'm sculpting for myself. Yes. And so I went with Halo Top and I regretted it, but it was still something It's sweet. like just shaved ice. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever. I, Whatever. I'm, I would rather just have real ice cream. Fair. Uh, cool throne is AFC Richmond because Ted Lasso is coming back July 23rd. That quickly? Yeah. Fuck Great yes. Show. Great show. And within yeah. an hour of that announcement, the Super League disbanded. Yep. I right. Can't Ted help Lasso. but Richmond not part of that uh, group. But Are they an actual team? No. I don't think so. No, I, I, love, I love the colors. I love the yeah. kit. Yeah. yeah. So they they are fictional, but yeah, that is that's yeah, great exciting. news. Yeah. Billy? Spin Zone, the Super League was promo- for Ted Lasso come back out. Ooh. Get everyone more into soccer in I America. Like that, Billy. I Americanized like Americanized soccer. I wouldn't put it past him because it was during the Apple Awards or whatever it is. Yeah. The, the showcase for the new Apples. Hmm. He's gotta come on before the season two. Jason Sudeikis? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, it sure. would be what is he he's a big time AWL? Huge. Yeah. I mean it just makes sense. I just want the kit. Really, that's all I need. I'm sick of seeing other people get mailed kits, and I've, I've yet to receive an AFC Richmond kit. Do you know that he's dating a uh, woman in Harry England? Styles? No. Oh. Jason Sudeikis is dating a woman in England who's like was a a, mo- a magazine model named Keely. Isn't that crazy? That's Whoa. the name of the. Mm-hmm. Is that in the show? Is that art imitating life or it's life imitating crazy. art? Yeah, real ones know who Keely Hazel is. She's OG, top on city. Been been around forever. Okay, I, I'm missing something here, but <laughs> that's all right. No, you're not missing anything. I really just wanted you to put an ice cube on my erection. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that enough. Yeah, well, I, we did. We talked we did. about no, it. No, no, I, no, I, I, I felt like I was taking crazy pills yeah. when it did kind of like just get slid under. He's the rug. a ride or die guy, and it was like. How, how did what was the process of elimination? You guys are you guys are PFT. You were a father. You guys understand how it is. Wow, that's fucked up. The only yeah. real weird You're stuff with widow, animals going on this father. show. Wait, what'd you say, Billy? The only real weird stuff with animals going on this show. Whoa, yeah, Billy. Uh, Hank, I just I do want you to walk me through your decision making when make a video. You saw, you saw your dog with a giant boner. What did you? What the ideas did? pop in your head where you're like no i'm not going to do that instead i'll put an ice cube on his penis all right you want my fucking thought process yes. here we go yeah boner pops out uh-huh. big ass dick just fucking hanging on the couch i'm watching a movie i looked at him he was standing still and i said i'm just gonna keep watching this movie and not even pay attention to you and hopefully next time i look over your boner's gone this is how girls feel in the morning 10 when minutes they can later poke in their back 10 minutes later <laughs> <laughs> I look over and he is in the same exact spot, has not moved, and is looking at me with the saddest, like, help me eyes you've ever seen. So my fatherly instincts kicked in. Yep. And I Googled it. I had Googled it in the past that this is what people <laughs> do. They're like, either put him in a bath. You you didn't even have to finish the, the sentence because it auto completed because you'd already done it? No, I, I didn't even have to Google this time because I already had the knowledge stored Got from it. last time. And it was like, so Yahoo answers? It was like, put him in a bath. And I was like, oh, that's way too much effort. Then I'm going to dry him off. It's too like the sexual. Bath. I'll just get an ice cube out 
and you know. So it came from your own it. brain. Yeah, I audibled. And it, did it go <laughs> up instantly? And the ice cube probably melted halfway through. Oh my god! <laughs> that was a hot boner. I don't. You guys, like, you guys would do any. Anyone listening that's fucking questioning this would do the same thing in this I, situation. I said I had your back on Twitter. I said you were a ride or die guy. Like you if, would I, do, if your son had a boner. Hank, I think you just you need to invent <laughs> like a, a scarf for for his penis or like dog shorts. Because it's out of sight, out of mind. You don't care if he has a boner. You just don't want to see it. You just don't want him dragging all over the place. Trojan tantrics things. Yeah. Get oh, him a, f- a dog flashlight. <laughs> All right, let's get to uh, let's get to Julian Edelman. Before we do that, PFT, you had a quick word. Yeah, I want to talk to you about Simply Safe. We love Simply Safe. It is the best home security system out there. You probably have a part of your house that feels a little less secure than you might want. Maybe it's your first floor windows. Maybe it's a French door. Uh, for me, it used to be my garage entry. Back when I used to have a house, the garage was always the easiest part to break into. Had a few break-ins in the neighborhood. Always thought somebody was going to sneak into my garage, steal my deep fryer for my turkeys. Then where would I be? But I never have to worry about that now because Simply Safe could take care of everything. Now there's no time, day or night, where you have to worry anymore because you know that your house is always going to be guarded. Even if you already feel safe, that might not be true of everyone in your home. If you've never had a conversation about that, it's honestly not a bad idea to do. It just feels really good to be able to press the home button on, on Simply Safe and hear the base say alarm on. Know that if anyone did try to come in, the alarm will go off. It gives you peace of mind. And the thing is, Simply Safe makes it so easy. It takes about two minutes to customize a system on their website. Two minutes. If you go to simplysafe.com slash PMT, that's S I M P L I S A F E dot com slash PMT. The system is going to arrive in about seven days. Then it takes just 30 minutes to set up. We've done it ourselves. It's really easy. Go to simplysafe.com slash PMT, customize your system, get a free security camera. You also get a 60 day risk free trial, so there's absolutely nothing to lose. Go to simplysafe.com slash PMT. Now, here he is. Julian Edelman. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend, uh, future Hall of Famer, which we can talk about. It is Julian Edelman, fresh off retirement. I think we're the first show he's doing. I'm just going to say we're the first show he's doing. Uh, it's great to see you. We also, uh, Jules, we got uh, a little news about what he's got going on next, which is going to be great for him. Uh, that will actually be released on our Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, everywhere, because it can't be released uh, until a little bit later on Wednesday, but we're excited for that, so we'll have that for everyone. But Jules, great to see you. Congrats on a retirement. How mad are you at us for asking you about retiring when you were totally thinking about retiring last time you were on in January? Not at all. I mean, when you that come sucked. on the show, when you come on here, you know nothing's off off the table. And... Um, I was just laughing in my head like these motherfuckers. <laughs> it, so you back, knew. So you lied to us. Yeah. I did not lie to you. I just I was there was there were two roads that I were I was looking at. One was, you know, plain, and one was not. And I tried to go down the plain road, and it just I couldn't do it. I can't do it right now. Looking you know? looking back, I do feel a little bad because I think if we had like thought about your reaction a little more. It was clear that you're like, what the fuck? Like, wh- who have they talked to that this is even maybe on the table? So I apologize for that, but a, cre- a great career nonetheless. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, d- I joked about the Hall of Fame, but it's obviously not a joke. Are you? Do you see any of that shit? Like, do you see the debate? Because I got mad for you that people were diminishing your career just because they were framing it in a Hall of Fame and not just he was really fucking good. I mean, you, you you see it out there, yeah. You definitely see it, um, but it is what it is, you know. Are you guys gonna make the podcasting Hall of Fame? Ooh, I don't know. It's tough to say while we're still competing right now. We're I just know, but it's one day at a time. Simulations, you know. Are you guys systematic podcasters? I don't know. Ooh. You know, do you guys are? Is it because of you know you know, Dave's gonna come over here and he's the guy that's you know started this whole thing? I I don't know. Right. These like, are all the types of the questions that I ask when I think about, you know, I think you guys are Hall, Hall of Fame podcasters. 
Um, yeah, but I mean, we might send Billy down to Tampa for a guys, year, and then can guys, we do it without him? Yeah. You know, you guys, when the moments are the, the toughest, I've always heard the best takes come from you. Thank if, you. When, when someone needed, when someone when you needed a take, in an absolute moment. <laughs> But nice does it? Take. But Julian, does it matter that as podcasters, your stats uh, aren't there? Your stats aren't there. Yeah, so no, like, the stats are not there. If you look at the, you're not Howard Stern. I mean, we're not there. Right. But you know what? The takes are there. Right. So if you look at the the, the longevity, there. right? Stat like Howard Stern's a great example. He compiled a lot of stats because he had a super Over super a long career. But there are moments that. It was big, like right around the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, later on in the season, that's when Big Cat, me, and Hank could be counted on to really step up. And sure, you know, we we only, you know, we had some injury issues. We both had kidney stones. Yep. We've missed some shows here or there. But do you think that that should be counted in judging us in the Hall of Fame? I'm a guy that, you know, when I go to do something, I just go to win. And I just want to win. I, I, I didn't grow up thinking about a Hall of Fame. I didn't grow up about... I grew up thinking about hosting a Lombardi trophy. So like, to me, I, I really don't know, but you know, me to you guys, I, I you know, I think of, of all the, the things that you guys have done. I mean, there's a lot of great things there. Can you tell the story of podcast without you guys? I can't, Ooh, I you... cannot tell the story of podcast without you guys. So and he, here, I mean, I don't want to toot our own horn, but we're not going to quit podcasting because we like bump our knee a little bit and get a little owie. Yeah. But I mean, say you guys take a little too much Adderall, you're, you're <laughs> skinny, you know, you, you, you're walking down <laughs> and you slip and you hit your head and you, you know, you can't think as well. I don't know. Would you, uh -huh. want, or would you, would you want to go out on top? Would you right. guys want to go up? I don't know these questions. I'm just, this is theoretically speaking. Yes. So what about if like, if Hank suffered an incident or if, if Liam got hit by another car, God forbid, and he wanted to get back into podcasting and he thought that the best way to get his brain back, maybe he would take a little performance enhancing drug to be able to rejoin the show to come back and win another title. Do you think that should be held against him in his Hall of Fame resume? You know what? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I would say no. Mm -hmm. I would say you want to be out there with your guys. Yeah. Hey. No days off. I want to be out there with your guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. What? Um. So, F, you you're retired. You are retired. I'm but how retired. long? How long do you think? How many years do you think uh, you'll be rumored to be going to the box? Because Tom Brady's going to play for ten more years. So I'd assume your name will be floated out there every single year that they might need an extra weapon. How many years? I don't know. Uh, probably as honestly, probably as long as he's playing. It's just yeah. going to be it also the jewels. first level. If I'm throwing out a couple of thirst traps out there, I'm looking like I'm in shape. I mean, it, it could go crazy. Uh -huh. If got, if, if like something happens and Scotty Miller sprains an ankle, your name will be trending within five seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Completely different player, but I, yes. Right. But you know, you get it. Did you see the, uh, the video that was out there of, uh, of Belichick when you returned your first punt for a touchdown and Wes was on the sidelines right next to him, and Bill asked him, hey, you know who Wally Pip is? He's the guy that got replaced by Lou Gehrig. And then Wes Welker was like, yeah, well, he can have the punt return job if he wants it. That's fine. Did Bill ever say anything to you like that when Gunner first got on the field? No. Never. <laughs> Did he look at you differently? Mm, no. He's like, this is an old hat. Would like, you? We don't need this. Would you have said? I, I don't know, man. I I was always in Gunner's corner. You know, I've always been Gunner's. You know, I I give Gunner all my tips, and you know, it was kind of like, you know, I would compete again. I'm still competing against him, but like, you know, we we're different different parts of our career then. You know, I'm, I was 12 years in when Gunner got in, and or 11 years in, and that was when like West was like seven years deep, and and he had it still going, so. You know, it was it was different. We also had a different relationship, me and Wes. It wasn't the same as, and and Bill probably saw that. Right. He probably was, you know, digging at him a little just to to get out under his skin to try to get him to play his best. That's what mm -hmm. Bill does. He gets the best out of guys. So yeah, you should root for Gunner because I I'm pretty sure Gunner's like next two years count for your Hall of Fame career. Just like everyone just combined Wes Welker's last few years with your career, so you should be rooting for Gunner 
because we enough years go by and everyone be like, yeah, that, yeah, he was sick that 2021 year with Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We will see. All right. Uh, so you brought up thirst trapping. I know a lot of times, like guys will say, "Oh, I'm going to miss the locker room." Will it be thirst trapping that you miss the most? Because I would imagine your body's not going to be in great shape. I'm. I... You know, a good old thirst trap definitely holds a spot in my heart. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like, it's between number two and number three Lombardi. It's like one, your first one, your last one, thirst trapping, then your middle one. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I would say that this might actually help your thirst tra- trapping career because you get to focus on all the glamour muscles that you might not have had True. as much time for when you were, you know, just getting a football shape. Yeah, you know it's the running. When you run a lot, that's what that's what keeps you cut. And when you can't run, I don't know. This is gonna this is whole new territory for me, guys. I if I come out here in like six months and have full dad bod, Ooh. I know that's gonna that's be what bad. I'm rooting for. Yeah, I'm, I am I'm absolutely at, rooting. I want to see you get fat, and then we can make fun of you, and then you can get thin again. Yeah, that we'll would be bully the, you. Yeah, that'd be the best that's cycle. Kinda, that's a, that's like like that's America's story right there. You know, get someone down, and then root, yep. them, cut them down, and get them back up. Let's that's do podcasting it. Podcasting one hundred and one. What yeah. what is your knee like at just in general of like walking pain? Are you going to the gym? Like you have to. I mean, we can't have Julian Edelman get fat. I, as no. much as I want to, you know, you gotta be out there. Doing like, hey, happy Father's Day. Here's a picture of me shirtless. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Oh, here's a picture of me shirtless. You know, like that That shit has to, hey, ha- Merry Christmas, guys. Happy oh, whoops, y- is me yeah. at a pool. Happy Yom, my- Yom yeah. Kippur. Yeah, right, right. Um, But, uh, yeah, we're going to keep, we'll keep some stuff going. Hey, you know, we got a, we got a workout routine going. And uh, my knee, I mean, it's just, it's different, you know, like it's, it's, it just doesn't function the way it wants to, you know, when, when you're bone on bone and you're missing things in there, like you don't want to run. <laughs> right, so, right. It's one of those things where you not only don't want to run, you really can't. So finding a way to fill that void is going to be, um, you know, my next life work. You need a hobby. We Bye. need to, we need to figure out what your hobby is because I mean, you've told us so many times, like what your workout routines would be like, how like you would be you. It's like cliche to say the last person out, but you would be working out all the time during football season. You need to fit, find a hobby that can fill that void. Might I suggest Frisbee golf, disc mm. golf, excuse mm. me. Do you, you have to walk it? Yeah. Bang chains, baby. I mean, let's see. Let's see how the shoulders are with the rotator cuffs. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll get, get into that. Ooh, those are bad too. So, but, right. We're we're thirteen surgeries deep right now. We're Ooh, thirteen. Yikes! Did, so. Again, I mean, I'm not saying like PFT uh, had surgery on his foot. Uh-huh. I got bit by a dog. We didn't quit, but whatever. That's fine. That's hey. your prerogative. That's fine. No, I have a serious question though. Uh, so obviously, it sucks having to retire, having the end of the road. But is it a silver lining? Like you just know you can't do it instead of. Uh, I'm I physically can do it, but I'm not the same ability that I was because I feel like that would be hurt more if you were physically feeling OK to do it, but just weren't as quick or shifty. This is really like, hey, it it can't happen. Like I can't my knee cannot do it. No, it, it. It's almost satisfying because I left everything on the field, honestly, like. You know, I'm not a greedy guy. What else do I have to play for? I, I, I set, set out to go out and, and make a team, try to win some championships. And honestly, I, I've accomplished everything plus more than I ever thought I would have going into my rookie year. Like, I, 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 if I were in my rookie year, look on to my career and say, this is what it's going to be, I would, I would, you would have, I would have said, no, nah, no shot. Right. Just, that's how much work I had to put into this whole thing. And – you know, it, it's something where I'm proud of my career. I'm proud of everything. I'm proud of the, the relationships, you know, the teams I've been a part of. And, you know, it, it, it father time is undefeated. And, you know, that, that's just how it goes. And I'm not going to go out there and try to play on something where you look like a bobblehead out there, like a 36-year-old old guy 
put lacing up the knee brace, the back brace. You know, I don't I don't want to have that. I don't want to I don't want to look like that. I respect the game too much. It's been too good to me. So, you know, it's one of those things where if I can't go out there and be the, the player that I know I am in this league and that I've been for, you know, a consistent period of time. You know, I have no problem walking away because, you know, I enjoyed the time that I did have in this league. Yeah. The way that you're talking right now, you're actually making a great case for yourself for the hall. Like it, Peter King's going to listen to that answer and be like, this guy gets it. Julian gets it. He gave to the sport. Yeah. More should, than the sport gave to him. Yes. You should say that you're going to have Peter King do your induction speech if yes. you do get into the hall. If I ever do, one of you guys will do my induction speech. It'll be a duet from you two and like <laughs> father. We would be like, uh, so Julian, not really a Hall of Famer when you put him up against <laughs> Reggie Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Heinz Ward? Why hasn't he been inducted in? I would just point to people in the audience and be like, that's John Madden down there. <laughs> that's amazing. What's up, Groots? Yeah. <laughs> it would be sick. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're never going to get in if, if that's your answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they will, be, they will keep a strike. you for that. Um, if, you, if you're looking back, though, at your career, because you had a lot of amazing moments, obviously, like winning the Super Bowls, getting the trophies, is there one moment or one play that you think of and you're like, I'm the most proud of that play. Not necessarily your best play or the one that we all have seen in highlights a lot, but like, is there one play where you're like, that's who I was as a football player? I loved uh, the third and 14 against the Seattle Seahawks getting, you know, when Tom hit me late across the middle and Cam Chancellor, you know, put, you know, put a little heat on me and, and hit me hard. And, you know, that whole week going into that game, all we kept on hearing was the Legion of Boom, the no-fly zone, the this, the that. And, you know, that that was a cool moment when, you know, I knew I got his best. And, mm -hmm. and I was able to get up and go and, and then, you know, make a play in the next couple plays. Like, you know, like that, hey, we're here to play. This this is – we may not be the flashy, you know, you know skill position group. We're not the Legion of Boom. We're not this, which I have nothing but respect for those guys. Those guys were studs. Earl Thomas, Sherm, freaking Chancellor. But, you know, that was that was like one of the things. That was that was my play that I, I love. That I, you know, that's 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 hard nosed football right there. That's what I always you know, when I transferred to receiver, it was always can you make the catch over the middle? Yeah. You know, and and that was the catch over the middle in the biggest moment, you know. So those were that was a fun play. And then I'd say my favorite memory would probably have to be when we went to Kansas City and, and won that game um, in 18. You know, just the, the sheer fact that my generation of Patriots, we never won on the road in the playoffs. And you know, that was our first task going to the road. And, and I'm, we got beaten Denver twice by Denver, close games, last plays of the game. And, um, you know, to, to go in, into Kansas City, which that place gets rocking, and that team's a really good team. And, you know, to go in and get that W and against that, 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 the odds of that, that game. And it was, it was special. That's a special one. The flight home, uh, you know, those are, the, those are what you're going to miss, you know, the flights. And, you know, that was a fun game. The, so you just said your favorite play. Uh, Hank texted us. He said, uh, a concussion was his favorite play. Were you concussed in that play, the third and 14? Everyone thinks I was, but not. Nah, I wasn't concussed. You got smoked. I got smoked. I definitely got smoked. Um, the thing is, on the punt return right before that, I don't know if it was that one. I, I took a hit pointer. And I've said this on, on air before. I took a hit pointer, and I could, I could barely walk. Like, but Like, when a play goes – especially in a Super Bowl, like everything, there's no pain. But in between plays, you're like, oh, shit, that hurts. Oh, no, that hurts. All right, so that hurt, and then we go. And so, like, after that, I mean, I was tired. We were going no huddle. Like, we, it was a pretty big play. And I was, like, trying to get up, and Dull is right there. And, you know, I couldn't – my hip pulled on me. You know, I, I don't think I had a concussion. Do you remember getting hit? Yeah. Like you remember the actual hit and how I it remember felt? actually, you know, I remember cause it was 10, it was uh X stock 10 and I had the outside. I was the F I had the 20 yard in cut and they were playing a P coverage, meaning they were dropping a guy. So 
Tom was going to have time. They were, they're given, you know, they were given eight defenders in, in the secondary basically. And so I was running late across the middle and I was 20 yards downfield. And I knew that someone, anytime you're going late across that middle, especially that deep, you got to start thinking about the post safety. And they're, they, you know, that's their whole thing is they run that, that cover six, which you guys will learn, whatever. So I'm going late across the middle and I look at Tom, I kind of saw Chancellor. So I knew that's if you see the play, I brace for the hit. And yeah. Then I hit. Yeah. I'm you know? watching it right now. And and for context, for people who don't like remember it off the top of their head, it's eleven minutes left in the Super Bowl and the Patriots are down ten on their own side of the field, uh, in third and fourteen. So like if you don't catch that ball, it you know, I mean I I I maybe he punts. I mean you probably punt because you got three timeouts. But that it might change everything. It might change history there if you don't catch that ball and you're forcing a fourth and fourteen on your own thirty. Yeah, no, it was it was you know it was a big part of the game, and you know that you know yeah, that's what you try to do. That's what you try to. That's why you lace them up, man. You dream for those moments. Yeah. So along that line, like I think, um, not to keep going with the Hall of Fame thing, but you obviously were huge in the big moments and the clutch moments. Do you, we always have had this discussion about the clutch gene. Did you feel like in a big moment, like things got slower for you or it's like, I just know I'm going to come through. I know that I'm going to make a big play here. Uh, and like, did you feel that with Brady? There were a few moments in my career um, where you feel that like that zone where things are going slow. And, and in some parts of that game, in Seattle, I felt that in a very small amount of parts of the game in, in Atlanta, I felt that. And then like all the game against LA, I felt that. But like those key moments and those those zone moments you get, I always felt like I got those through like the weeks of preparation or like, especially with like the Super Bowl week, you get two weeks and like, like I feel like the first one we got there, I was so nervous and I didn't, I wanted to go out and be able to make plays. So I made my routine. Sh I sharpened my routine. I did everything that I did during the regular season plus more. And Bill does a great job of, you know, he, he, he does a really good job of making practice hard. I know everyone says, Oh, well, it's just practice. But when you're doing things in practice in certain situation, he'll just say in, in the middle of practice, all right, it's third and 14. There's one minute you go, you have no timeouts and you have to get to here. Like, like in between a period. So like he's putting that on you right there and it's competitive period. And if you can go do it in practice and you've done it in practice a few times, you're subconsciously already, you've already done it. So I, that, that's how I thought, that's how I've always dealt with those situations and those times in my, my career that like you're really zoned in. It, it was always after those weeks of practice that you like, you had those plays like, I remember when Tom hit me on that one play where it was the tip ball and we caught it. I knew that guy was coming to me because we hit that play like three times in practice that week. So regardless if I was covered or not, he was coming to that play because we're confident in what we saw that week in practice, you know? So like, that's how it always happens. So along those lines, I mean, everyone always says one of the great things about Tom Brady is that he'll throw to he'll throw to the open guy. Like he won't play favorites. If you're open, if you can get open, he'll throw to you. But were there moments where you were would say to him like, "Yo, I'm I'm in the zone. Like I will, I will catch whatever you throw to me. Like get it to me. I'm that guy." We definitely had some times and some moments where he would just look at me. And we would do something completely that like we weren't supposed to do. And the coaches used to get on us all the time. Like, all right, you like, I know you guys got to, you guys are doing what you guys do and we can't say anything because you guys execute. Cause like that coaches get mad with that kind of stuff. Right. Go and do your own thing. And there'd be a couple of times where like he would give me, you know, a signal or it'd be a quick out and I knew he saw that I couldn't run a quick out here because this is nothing there. And I knew that he saw that we were backside and a slant would be wide open. I would just run a slant and this guy would hit me on the slant. We'd go 15, 20 yards at the gate on it. Like that happened over in a Miami game in the, one of those heat games. We ended up losing the, I know we won that game. It was a late game, but that was in like 14 or, or yeah, 2013 or something like that. Where like, there'd be times where 
we would just kind of do our own thing. And because of the years that we had off the field where we would go to Montana or we would go to UCLA, we'd go to all these places and we would run the same play, which you could do like five different things on that same play, according to each coverage that you get. And we would have our, like some of our, you know, friends that are out there helping us, like just try to cover like two or three guys try to cover me. And like, even though they don't know how to cover, they could cover area and he could read body language and I could read his body language. I, I could see what he would want. You know, those things helped us when we were to get into games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that shit's fascinating. I've always wondered if you watch, if you watch the film of a Super Bowl after it's over, like, do you sit down as a team and ever break that down? Or is it just one of those games where it's like, what happened is the end of this season. We're going to wait till next season, and start over again. You don't, because once you're done with the season, you know, like there's no more like film corrections or anything, especially after that game, you have the parade, you have this, you have that, and everyone breaks. But then like when spring comes and all of a sudden they'll have a cut up of plays, an installation, because that's what spring is. You're installing the offense basically for all the new guys and, the you know, whatever, like you'll get like, a play from here, a play from there, and then you'll get a Super Bowl play and everyone's ears kind of get up and shoulders go back and like, look, and the new guys that didn't involve, weren't involved in the Super Bowl are sitting there like, man, they're in the Super Bowl or like, you know, that's when you see it, you know, but you never really watch it as a team. Yeah. Um, what did uh, Coach Belichick say to you when you uh, were like, all right, this is the end of the road? Did he text? Did he call? I hope he called. No, we, we, we had a, a wonderful conversation on uh, on the phone and uh you know he just he he it was a um, you know he thanked me and I thanked him and you know I'll leave I'll leave the words between us but like it was it was something that was you know it really touched me and because you know he he's a he's a man of few compliments because that's his that's his shtick you know his thing is I don't care who the hell you are you're on the table to get mf if you don't do your job which i always needed that i loved that my dad did that with me growing up like i it was a tough love thing where i what i grew up with and so like to you know hear coach say that some of the things he said i mean that was you know that that really made my uh my 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 farewell that yeah. made it did he uh he like read off your home address he's like julian you still live at this location and you have uh this many people living with you and uh just want to make sure that as you advance your career you keep everything that happened in new england between us <laughs> yeah. no, no he didn't say any of that no. did er a... did ernie call you no ernie uh, i haven't talked to ernie oh no I love ernie too. Er no, Ernie did not. No, go ahead. Tell the Ernie story. Ernie's tell an Ernie story. Tell an Ernie story. You wanted to tell an Ernie story. Well, Ernie's the kind of guy, bro. Like, Ernie is – Ernie comes into the facility, and, like, we have, like, our cafeteria, and every day you'll see Ernie. He's an early bird, or he'll just be sitting at a uh, at a lunch table with a, with a huge-ass, like, heirloom tomato. That's all he has in his, his hand. <laughs> And he's got like a fork and knife and he'll just be eating the tomato. And I'm like, I always like bust his balls. Like, Hey, the tomatoes in season right now. Like he'd be like, yep, 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 yep they are, you know, like <laughs> he's not a real big talker unless you talk football. And you know, over the years we've had an awesome relationship and I always bust his balls on what he used to wear and stuff. Cause he wears like, he was wearing these plaid suits from like 1970, like in like 2009, 10, and they came back in like what, like 2014, 15. And then I'd be like, Ernie, man, you've been wearing that thing through the trend. He goes, they never went out of style. Like, <laughs> like you know, like he just has these little witty comments uh, that are that are awesome. And you know, I'm gonna miss him for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you gonna miss doing the hype videos Ooh. before the games? Because you were addicted to those as much as you were for for doing the thirst traps. You know what I I loved. So that all started back in high school. Like I was the kid who after the year was done, <clears throat> I worked at this place called the Rikus Center, which it was a training facility. It helped you like your speed and stuff, but it also had like like a film st studio, like a uh, editing studio, this, that. So I would always make all like the team highlight tapes after the season and like throw it on with some like ACDC. And, and so that's where that all developed. But um 
I mean, I, you got to throw a hype. A hype video will always be there, man. You can do hype videos for your thirst traps. Yeah. Like show you getting ready to make the thirst trap and then have it all culminate in like one click of a camera with your shirt off. Yeah, let me think about that. How, like that. how many times did you watch one of your hype? You were really good at them. I, I know you have a staff, but the, some of them were incredible by the end. Would you watch them yourself like over and over and over? I, I would be part of it. Like sometimes I would be like, yo, I want this here. I want this. Uh, and like I had the last, the last, you know, the last, six, the last button. Which, is, which one was your favorite? I liked the cartoon ones when we were doing the cartoon ones back in, uh, 18. What was the, uh, what was our, um, cartoonist guy's name? Frazier. Frazier. Yeah. yeah for this Frazier. He, we found him and we got in contact with this guy and he made like this Rocky one. Or like I was climbing the mountain or the one with like the arrow and he, you know, and I caught the arrow and like looked it in the eye. And like, I've always been a fan of a huge, like awesome montage, like a nineties, late eighties movie montage, Rocky, Cobra, you know, all, all those. That's just, I loved those. I loved like music and guys training. That yes. could, it could be a, a, a good little transition for you. You said you need a hobby you could direct other guys' hype videos. You could put them together. You could be a writer of hype videos. Well, you guys started as writers and then became podcasts. Right. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So who's one guy in the NFL right now that you would like to produce a hype video for? Hmm. And why is it Jameis Winston? <laughs> I he, like Jameis. He could use one too. Like I feel like I saw that video that was going uh, viral where he was like, you know, I was the number one pick, and then everyone shit on me. I think he might he might win a Super Bowl with enough of your hype videos. Yeah, I'm 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 probably gonna I'm I'm not gonna go with 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 Jameis on that one. I'll let him do his own hype videos. Um, who would I give a hype video to? DK DK would make for an awesome hype video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's already hyped. I want I want a guy that's not hyped. Scotty Miller? Scotty Miller could be a good hype hype guy. <laughs> Get yeah. your foot in the door with Scotty Miller. Yeah, hey. so that you can cut him Scott in the back. Miller. Yeah. <laughs> you could just swap out like this next year's Super Bowl. <laughs> Scotty Miller looks a little bit like Julian Edelman. Like you or, just you you, or, you or, kidnapped or you, him. <laughs> you go with the burrow? Yeah. Oh yeah, we could get you doing bros. I, I was just gonna add on to comeback. To... You need the comeback hype. Yes. Like, all right, you know, you know, it's kind of like Eye of the Tiger. You know, you're back in the streets. You gotta, you know what I mean? It's it, you, you've been trading what you really want for you know the glory, and then something happens, and then now you got to get back on your horse and fucking get back on top. So like that's the story I was like. I like that you're passionate I, I about that one too. On top. I don't want. I don't want the guy on top. I want the guy that's on the bottom. Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. <laughs> Come on. I think I think we get started with the Joe Burrow hype video because I can tell you're passionate about it. You already got the soundtrack for it with Eye of the Tiger, it sounds like. He's a knee guy. You're a knee guy. Knee guy to knee guy. It, it seems like a perfect fit. Although if you did do the Scotty Miller one, you could like add in like very sneakily a couple clips of him dropping the ball into his hype video and don't tell him about that. And that way when it comes out, it's like, hey, Scotty Miller really drops the ball a lot. I wonder if there's anybody else out there mm -hmm. that could mm -hmm. play. But I like the Joe Burrow one. I like that idea. Me too. I like them both. Yes. Um, who's your favorite teammate? That's, that's, that's so tough, man. Give us one. And then your least favorite, obviously. <laughs> we need both. You could actually – I mean, you could – Say Aaron you know, Hernandez, right? Love, yeah, easy way that's out. That's an easy answer. It, it's tough, you know. Like, it's tough for your favorite. You have like a group of guys that you came in with, a group of guys that you're around. You know, Matthew Slater. You know, he he was. We lived together for a long time. Um, and you know, him and his family have been an unbelievable influence on just me. You know, I'm, I'm a wild man. Everyone, everyone knows that. And, and Matt is like literally like the reverend. And we had like two polar opposite sides of everything. And like we lived together. And, you know, when, when times were like, you know, at its lows, my guy would always help me mentally and, and he would always be the guy. And, you know, when, when times were high, he was the one to remind me like, yo, 
this is where you can, you know what I mean? So like, I loved him. Uh, Matthew Slater is, is, you know, he'll be a brother for, for life. Uh, you know, the Rob Ninkoviches, we used to get after it. Danny, when he came into the picture, he was always an unbelievable teammate. James Devlin, like when James Devlin, he, he was an ultimate teammate. This guy would just his, he didn't say much, but he would be in the, the weight room and he'd have his smelling salts, his chalk. He'd be all braced up to squat and he'd hype you up when you were getting in there. Like, you know, and he was just always a, a class, class teammate. Tom, of course. I mean, I love Tom. Who? Brady. Oh. He's been, <laughs> he's been, you know, he's been, he's been like an older brother for me. Mm-hmm. And, but he was always kind of like, you know, he was the older brother that, you know, you, you didn't, you hung out with them, but you had like your little slap dick friends too, that right. like before you were cool enough to hang out with your older brother, like you hung out with. So I, I always, you know, had those guys and there's so many more. Um, I noticed you didn't mention Gronk. Mm. Interesting. Oh, Gronk. Why do you hate, one? Why did you and Gronk have a falling out? <laughs> we never had a falling out. It's just, you know, Gronk, Gronk was like, he legit was like having just a big old teddy bear at work every day. So like, you know, I, I would be an intense guy always. A lot of the time <clears throat> I'd be a jokester too, but like I was very intense. And to have that, like, you know, to have a guy like Gronk who, the game just came so easy. This guy was like, just having fun. Like you'd see him in the corner of his lo- locker, like playing with like a tape and like, like laughing and like, you know, you needed that. You definitely needed that. So Gronk's I, me up there. Um, I, I think we should put that your description of James Devlin there. That should be part of your hall of fame resume because you, the excitement that you had there to explain someone getting ready to like, go to war at the squat rack, that's a football guy. Like, you, I could see in your eyes thinking about him just lifting got you excited in the moment. Well, you know, James James came from a very similar story, man. Like, he was he was defensive lineman at Brown. He was like a D-end or something. And he worked his way to becoming, you know, one of the best fullbacks in the game. Like, we, we live and died by, by James. Like, yeah. He did so much for this team, you know, in the, in the special team game, like, and he, you never heard anything from him, you know? And there was times where like, I'd be sitting there and I want to say something. Then you look at a guy like James who he, he doesn't ever touch the rock or anything. And this guy is like just gun ho excited to be there. Coffee. Let's go weight room smelling salt like that that's that's james devlin and and those are the guys that you're going to remember yeah you know? that one play they had in the super bowl i think it was against the rams because he had to block in dominican sue and he he laid a wham on him and you could tell like he knew that he was about to get knocked out in that play he was oh. going to get run over but he was like you know what i have to do this and i'm just going to like i'm going to run head first into this guy and it worked it worked you had, you had a couple big blocks in the super bowls too how come people don't talk about your blocking ability i don't know man i just do what the team asked me to do i love it yeah <laughs> put that on the resume the, you know it's i mean that's a huge part like i remember and that's a, a huge reason of that of our blocking as as new england receivers was because of chad O'Shea. You know, when I first got there, Chad O'Shea just – he just got there. I believe he's in Cleveland now. He went with um, Flores to Miami as the OC, and then now he's the receiver coach at Cleveland. But, like, Bill would always just say two things to the receiver. You just get open and catch the fucking ball. That's what you do as receiver, all right? And then we'd go in the room, and, and, Ch- and Chad would be like, and compete in the run game. And we're competing in the run game. You know, you catch the ball, and you compete in the run game. And, you know, like, it was just, you know, I had guys before me that were that were awesome blockers. And so that's that's what you, you learn when you're a younger guy. And, you know, you got to be – you can't be afraid to go in and block. You, it's, a, it's an effort thing. And, you know, 
and James Devlin, he's the type of guy that motivated you too. Cause like, like he, he craved can like, he craved head injuries. This guy like wanted to go knock himself out. That's when he knew he had a good block. Like, so when you see a guy like that, then you're like, man, I got to go do the same thing. Yeah. The, um, so we're going to, like I said, at the start of the interview, we know what, uh, Jules got going on next. We're going to put it out on all of our social Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere, uh, when the announcement can be made. So make sure you check that out. But I know what you're going to be doing next. He's going to be Jack Easterby's hype man. Jack Easterby's hype man. I, the way you're talking right now, is there any chance maybe coaching? Uh, abs- you know what? No, probably not. You know, I, I, I have too much, like, I want to have a life. Like, I've, I've lived this now for, for 12 years of, like, literally 14-hour days. Like, get up, 4.30 get to the facility 515 body work workout ball drill meetings practice more workout more meeting like and the coaches are there for like 18 hours and the sheer fact that I've seen this group do that if I were to go somewhere else and not do that then I'm thinking like all right I'm already in the hole because I don't feel like doing that anymore you know yeah. what I mean which I'll probably end up transferring and doing that in the next life but like right now like no, nah, I have no interest into it. Maybe like, you know, I, I always tell the, the scouts, so if you need a guy in L.A. to look a guy or receiver, work him out. And look, I, like because I always say, like, what are we doing? Like, let me look a guy in the eyes and I'll tell you if he can play or not. Ooh. Like, that's what it is. It's in the huddle. When you're in a huddle, you, you like there's false eyes and there's there's not like you need to be able to look a dude in his eyes and like really see if that guy if he's ready for when it's going to come. Yeah. Who had I the, like that answer. Who had the best huddle eyes? Mm. Whose eyes were the Brady, readiest? Brady's got Brady's got in, insane huddle eyes. Brady, because, you know, I mean, he's already got, like, the, you know, Zoolander, like, Blue Steel, like, look, and, like, he give you that eye and, like, Jules, let's go. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to clip that. I think that was, like, every – that was <laughs> Julian Elvin's entire career right there summed up in, in a second and a half. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the funniest eyes would be Gronk. Gronk would be, like, looking at you like, that's the one guy who's got a great poker face. You you just don't know where it's going. You just <laughs> look at Gronk's eyes, and you think, like, hey, is Gronk tired or what's going on? And then he'd have, like, a 50-yard catch and, like, like B6 guys, and he'd come in, like, oh, I'm a little tired after that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be, like, stiff-armed, like, three guys. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh. like, Heck of a time, Billy. Yeah. You have any questions for Jules? Well, yeah. Let me do the last question. The Roback. Okay. Yeah. So uh, use code PFT on Roback.com for twenty percent off your first purchase. Roback.com. R H O B A C K. dot com. Code PFT. They make the best performance poles. The only performance poles we wear. And for our guest today, we're going to give you a free Roback performance Q zip on us. Uh, this is this is big because Billy is going to do the Roback question. So uh, my question is it's gonna be pretty hard hitting. Let's let's hear it. I, I always hey, I'll tell you right now, my guy knows some football. I, I hear your takes, Billy. <laughs> I, I listen, I hear your takes, buddy. Appreciate it. Football and frogs. <laughs> football. So many Belichick disciples have been hired as head coaches outside of the Patriots. And why haven't then they been able to recreate Ooh. the Patriot way outside of Foxborough? Good, Good job, job, Billy. Billy. Rowback question. It's hard to go in and, 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 and try to be Bill Belichick without being Bill Belichick. You know, you can't just go in and, and demand, you know, the respect and, and put like this crazy, you know, work schedule and this schedule and, and, you know, attention to detail and the practice, like intensity, like you have to kind of massage that in for a group that has never really had that. You can't just go and demand it. You know, Bill can literally, you know, Bill's coached in the league for 40 years. You know, he started with the Baltimore Colts, bro. Like he's been around this. He's seen every position, every type of player, like in the thousands. So like, it's hard for a guy to like, not, it, it, you can't just go and try to copy what he does. It's not going to be you. I, I think that's that a lot of it has to do with that. A lot of these guys, 
you know, they go in, they try to be a hard dick or they try to be this and they try to, you know, they, they try to do everything that Bill does. You can learn a lot from that. And I don't know, I don't, I had never played for another coach and I'm not saying it, it could have been different. There's different circumstances with everything, but you know, just, I don't think you can just go and demand, you know, a team like you're Bill Belichick unless you're Bill Belichick. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Was Good there, question, Billy. Was there anything that he ever tried to do, like a, a new wrinkle that he tried to add or a different way of doing things around the building where he recognized that this way wasn't working and had to like walk it back and be like, I tried something new, didn't work, let's go back to the old way? Yeah, there was a time where like we were we were talking about like team unity or something and like guys started putting cornhole in the, in the locker room and then like we ended up like losing a game or something and we go right in there's no more cornhole so it was gone you know uh -huh. like you know but bill does a great job he's evolved man he, he's a, he's an evolver that's why he's been able to stick around and, and do the things that he's done i mean you know having tom brady has obviously helped a lot as well but uh you know he he's very in tune with evolution like i remember when it was 2000 you know, like 14 and like he bring in, you know, a bunch of the, gr like a group of leaders and like he, he broke down to us like, all right, guys, this, we got a new generation of guys. This is what, you know, like, this is how they're learning in college. This is what we're going to have to end up evolving to. This is how they, you know, they're not just like this. They're, they're guys that are going to be like this and they've been on this and, you know, so he's always thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I do think that like a Belichick and a Saban, we joke about how set they are in their ways and how old they are, but they do clearly do something when it comes to the evolution of, you know, how they think and what they're changing year to year. Definitely. I mean, you saw it in your time. You went from there was a time when you guys were throwing the ball everywhere and then you became a power running team. I would say, yeah, like my, my rookie year and then was 2009 we were we had we had moss welker joey galloway and we were throwing a bunch we were kind of like lost in that hole we were just we, we didn't have an a uh, like really an identity and then the next year we got the two we got hernandez and gronk and we completely evolved the game to you know matchups and chess matches were all right, if they're going to have sub personnel on defense, we're going to we're going to keep our 12 personnel in. And if they go big boys, we're going to spread them out. And then it, that became a trend. Now, look at look, look at the damn position. I mean, he kind of started that. If you think about it, he had Gronk and Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Like that was like the beginning of that whole athletic. This tight end is like the baddest dude. Let's do these things, you know, for these guys. So, I mean, he always builds his teams to what he has. So, you know, that, that that's what. He does. Yeah. Yeah. It's um so this has been awesome, man. Again, tune in, nine thirty. We're gonna drop it everywhere. Um hey, what's, what's this thing? Well, I was hearing you guys talk this uh what B Billy Football was talking about uh he's getting on a keto diet or something, and you guys are you're getting on a meat diet? Yeah. Well, Billy he he cycles us on and off of diets pretty frequently, but he didn't do his research because apparently keto is like the last thing that you should do if you have kidney stones. Which we most have. of this show does have yes. kidney stones. So you guys aren't doing a meat diet? I, I think I'm going to do OMAD. What is that? One meal a day. Oh, I was going to send you guys some meat. This, I, this meat. Yeah. This, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. No, we're, no, we're doing the meat, meat diet. diet. We're doing I'm meat diet. going carnivore. This meat carnivore. biscuit's insane. Yes. I need, it in the, I, need it, I need it right over there by that. What is that, a Colorado Kool-Aid right there? Coors? We yeah. got Coors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I like, we Colorado Kool-Aid, we're just stealing that one. Shit, we're definitely, we're cutting oh, that, we're cutting yeah, that, that and stealing crazy it. Thing. Yeah. Being a West Coast kid, and then I went to Ohio for college, we always drank Coors Light and like that brand of beer. And then we went out, I went out there, it was like Miller and Bud. I was like, what's going bleep on? Bleep those, yeah. bleep Ew. those, we'll bleep those. Sorry you had to deal with that. Yes. Bleep yes. those, bleep yeah. those. I was more of a Colorado Kool-Aid guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Um, all right, well, Jules, thank you. Uh, and again, everyone check out 930. We're going to put it everywhere. Uh, awesome things coming for, for Julian, and, and you're always welcome on the show. You're a recurring guest Hall of Famer and a Thirst Trap Hall of Famer, so there's two Hall of Fames right there. Hey, man, I, I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Most guys have tried different ways to last longer in bed, but thinking about baseball doesn't always work. The folks at Roman, an online men's health company, are changing the game with Roman Swipes. It's the secret to longer-lasting sex. 
Roman swipes are a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah. Maybe the Super League could have used some Roman swipes. Oh. <laughs> would last longer. Roman can ship swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each swipes package is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry. You're good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash take. You can get your first month of swipes for just five bucks. Choose a monthly plan. Go to GetRoman.com slash take. Okay, we're going to finish up with some FAQs. Reminder, go watch uh, where Jules is going to be on our Twitter and Instagram, and uh, we'll retweet it. Fun stuff for him going forward. Awesome interview by him. Also, before we do FAQs, a little housekeeping. Billy Football, our son, uh, We I had a, a, a talk with him last night because – I was getting frustrated, uh, and it was a situation where I didn't want to keep getting frustrated. So Billy's going to go away for a month and a half at the end of next week. He's retiring. He's retiring. He's going to – basically, no. I'll, I'll actually this explain is, the whole This thing. is much better explained as being like the rum springer, like with the Amish. Yeah. Where they go out into the real world. They sow some oats. Billy just wrapped up college. He's going to have fun for a couple months. Come back refreshed. And at, at that point, Billy, you can decide whether you want to rejoin the family or – or be shunned for the rest of your life. Right. It, it, uh, the way I put it is Billy, on Sunday he was maybe came in a little drunk, and then on Monday he came up to me and was like, hey, I accidentally booked tickets to Nashville on Wednesday. And I said to myself, Classic. I said to myself, uh, I'm Everyone's tired of being the bad cop with Billy all the time and being the guy who's got to yell at him because then I get mad at him and then it comes through in the show and people are like, don't be mean to Billy. It's like, well... He's half in, half out right now, which I understand because it's your senior year. So I told Billy, I was like, listen, why don't you go enjoy your senior year? No regrets. You can have fun. You don't have to worry about this show. You can fucking ball out. And then when you come back in June, and I told you, pick a date that you're ready mm -hmm. to go 100%, want it all out of your system. And then when you're back, you're ready to roll and you actually will, you know, not frustrate me. You Hopefully. Know, I it's it's very fair to be honest. I've been you know half in half out. You know, doing doing as much as I can, but also you know, try yeah, yeah. <laughs> half in half out. Yeah, like, as much as you can is not true. And, but <laughs> I also in the next coming weeks I have stuff like finals. Yeah, uh, right. Senior presentations. Enjoying your time with your boys. Right. Family stuff. So, all so, kinds of so stumps he, that need exploring. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the deal. Billy's gonna go. He's not gonna come to the office. At, next Thursday will be his last time in the office for a month and a half. He's not gonna come to the office. If he wants to zoom in. He's more than welcome to, but we're not going to expect anything from him. That way, there's no disappointment. There's no anger. There's no frustration. It's just Billy's gone for a little bit. If he wants to check in, he's more than ha welcome to because we love him and he's part of this show. And if he doesn't and he wants to just get drunk for a month and a half, two months, three months, whatever, when he comes back, we'll be ready to roll. I cannot wait to come back. <laughs> don't make a promise. No, no, don't make a promise. You, you will get a hundred percent. Okay, as soon as school is over, okay. and your month after school is over. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. No, right I told him. I, I, I was like June. He was like, I'll be back June second. I was like, Billy, really? Maybe it's a, hard date. a yeah. couple weeks after that. So like, how about pick this, your date. No, I'll be, I'll be back. Can you give us a report of how you spent your summer vacation? You will. You'll come back with one. That'll be your only assignment. But I'll come, I'm coming back in the beginning of summer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but this is your summer vacation. Yes. Your, your spring, yes. your early summer vacation. Yes. Yes. True. Spring so, break. So next Friday, yes. we'll have our last show with Billy for at least a month and a half in person, and we'll do something special for it. And then we'll send our little boy off to get graduate. And then that will diffuse me having to be the, the strict parent with you. True. I yes. mean, not many college kids also podcast. So there's a little bit of right. You're doing an incredible job. No college kid has ever had a part time yeah. job. No, Billy's right. <laughs> the, the schedule that Billy's been forced to keep up between. No, no, I'm very grateful three for three podcasts a week. Yes, guys. yes, yes. All but, right, but we're yeah. gonna we're gonna kick the hell out of draft week, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. You're gonna we're gonna Definitely. maybe get some shit going for draft week. Oh yeah, we got Chipotle <laughs> bowls to analyze. We got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. All right, we'll mm -hmm. have a special draft week. Here. I, I'm excited for that. All right, let's do some FAQs. Uh, ask for some for some high FAQ related given given the oh. day today. Mm. What what is your guys' weirdest experience high? Weirdest experience high. Uh, I went to go see. I saw Three Eleven perform on Three Eleven Day one time in New Orleans, and it was my first time ever seeing them play. And when they do that show, they play for like five hours. Mm -hmm. And so being high and then getting sober and then being high again, I'm like, I thought that they played 
like uh, all mixed up six times during yeah. the course of their set. Just be, anytime that you're high for longer than than five hours at a time, can things start to kind of mold together a little bit, and it makes it an awkward experience. I would say the um, I don't know if eating mushrooms also counts as being high, even though it's 4:20. But I uh, in Madison, I walked all the way across a frozen Lake Mendota and then back, and on the way back collected a bunch of like wood and timber and branches and thought it was like the coolest thing ever and was like i'm gonna fucking decorate my apartment with all these branches and it's gonna be like a fucking tree house and then i woke up the next day and there was just like my whole apartment was full of trees you turned into a squirrel <laughs> it was fucking so stupid you're like a beaver, you're a beaver so yeah. stupid <laughs> yeah but it was sick i would at say the time. i would also add <clears throat> when i took mdma in hong kong and then i just i started laughing because carlin isles was so fast and I started laughing so much that I started to cry. That's beautiful. Because, man. Of, because a man was so fast mm -hmm. on the field. Hi, boys. I'm looking for advice from Billy. Oh, he's a great one to give it out. I'm a model, and I have a casting for a national brand athletic wear company. In the video, they want me to show how hard I train when I work out. But being a model, I literally only do cardio and light body weight exercises. How do I convince them I'm an athlete? What you got to do is you got to do burpees. Yeah, but do one really good one where you jump, like almost do a worm and then bounce up off your arms. You can do that because you're light and you don't have that much body mass, and that looks super athletic. And then also do stuff like, like any sort of like pull up repetitions, pull but just ups. splice it, so it looks like you're doing a bunch of them, but it's really just you doing it once. It, is this a male model or a female model? Does it matter? No, Come because on, Billy dude. was answering like it was a female model. No. Pull up. He says he can't do any weight she, training. So he she slash her. Okay. So it get, uh, show that you can take a hit, get tackled, and then people be like, that's an athlete. Yeah. Pull ups is a good one, though, Billy. Yeah. Pull ups is like one of those ones where you're like, oh, that person knows what they're doing. Yeah. Not CrossFit pull ups, though. No, no not no, the no, kipping. Not the kipping. No, no, the kipping no. or fucking bullshit. Big cat, cleaning question. Do you still pee down the sink to sanitize it? Uh, I do still pee in sinks. Not often. Um, it's more out of just like, I don't know, a little bit of boredom, a little bit of like, I'll be like doing the dishes. One thing they don't tell you is when you have a kid, there's like 17 loads of dishes every single day. So I'll just be sitting there doing the dishes, finish the dishes, be like job well done, pee in the sink. You know, just kind of a treat for myself. If you have a dog that drinks out of the bowl. What about it? Just pee in the sink. What? What? You know how dogs drink out of toilet bowls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my house does. My house has locks on everything. Oh, so you're making sure that your dog's <laughs> yeah. not drinking your pee. Got it. Okay. You, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. one that gets forgotten about for the flush sometimes. Understood. Yeah, I will never know the pleasure of being in a sink. I, I think you have to be at least like six two to pull that off. Mm -hmm. so. Ah, the small sink. We'll get you one. A private we'll sink just for Yeah, we'll build you one. <laughs> Speaking, I've of been thinking about like how cool would that be to just cut a hole in your wall of your apartment. And you can just like piss out out the wall. Yeah, nobody would ever know. It, or a it trash would, hole. Yeah, exactly. It would just feel like mystery water, the air conditioning water that hits you every summer in New York. Which, by the way, that's another who's back of the week is mystery water yes. when you're walking down the sidewalk. Big time, just getting jizzed on. Speaking of high, how come some podcasts randomly go higher than you guys in the podcast ranking sometimes? Oh, oh does that question. mean they get more listeners? Good question. No, that's a great question. No, I it, love it does not. Rankings. I think so. If you start a new podcast, your podcast is always going to be. It just goes to number one. That's right. just how it works. We were we've been around for so long that we forgot. Like that also happened to us. And oh, we also did tell everyone like we're number one. I was like, I'm bigger than cereal, bitch. Right, but then you realize, okay, that's not exactly how it works. The way that the 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 way to like realize the success of shows is episodes so if you go to the episode page you can see where shows are ranked um and that's why you know we'll, we'll see the chirps every now and then be like oh someone else is number one just look at the episodes bitch they're always we're there i mean i think we're number three overall in the world uh after monday's show what well yeah we're usually around there number three in the world behind monday is number one behind both most recent episodes of call her daddy um For no sports. yeah yeah no 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 three I'm three I'm talking about three overall yeah mur episodes right now I'm looking at it murdered Sierra Jogan uh rip see that's what I'm saying we the have daily to a difficult diplomatic triangle uh -huh. part of my take NFL draft with Daniel Jeremiah Super League with troops okay so and then Dax wait. Dax Ch Dax what's a what's Blake's fucking stupid friend's name Shepherd. Dax Shepard Dax Shepard is that like six of the or three of the top six are either our podcast or two people that were immediately on our podcast. 
Mm. You said Troops and Daniel Jeremiah. No, no, no. That's the name of our show. Oh, okay. Description. I yeah, thought, I thought high? there were podcasts <laughs> up there. Are you high? But either way, uh, we see it. Obviously, people tweet us, tag us, whatever. Uh, if you have a new podcast, you should take the victory lap. But also mm. know that if we tweeted every time we were number one, we'd probably have to tweet like 300 times a year. And also, Billy, if you wanted to get murdered on your little uh, vacation that you're going to take, and that way we could have Jake try to track down who your murderer was, that would probably do wonders oh, things. So yeah. you guys do a murder things. podcast? Yeah. About you. Oh, let's go. Go listen yeah, to I'll, the case, by the way. It. Kirk's podcast, very good. I listened to the first episode. It was good. Yeah. I'm going to binge it because my brain can't. My brain cannot handle not binging things. Mm-hmm. It's the worst thing that has happened with like today's entertainment. I watched a we documentary know. last night, and when it was over, I was like, is this over? Yeah, right. I was like, "There's, wh- where's episode two? Right. What was the, what was the we know? <laughs> Just we know. What do you mean? We, just, you know, shave your beard. We can tell. Oh, binging. Fuck, that was a fat joke. Yeah. The the problem uh, is I'm wearing a I'm wearing a black shirt I was, today. I was gonna so say. when I wear a black shirt, everyone like a little life hack for anyone who's uh, which isn't really everyone knows this, but like if you're a little bit fatter and it's springtime. Put on, buy a bunch of black T-shirts, and you are guaranteed to have people be like, "Oh, have you lost weight?" It's like, "Nah, dude, I'm just wearing a black T-shirt." So then I forget uh-huh. that I am uh, technically obese. So when Hank makes a joke like that, it goes over my head. Well, because I'm like, "Dude, I look hot right now. I'm when, in a black T-shirt." When I saw you today, I was like, "Big Cat's definitely wearing the shirt that he wears when he feels fat." But that's probably because I've known you for a while. No, I know no, your no. Tricks. no, 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 no. This was if I'm really feeling fat, it's a sweatshirt. This was the first really warm day having to wear something not a sweatshirt short shirt. sleeves yeah that's you, what this you is. do you look like a guy at um an anime convention that's in charge of like the uh, stage lighting i'm like a late late version of jerry garcia when he just wore black t-shirts sup honk pft and big cat what item of food would you eat knowing you only get to eat it while you're high and it's the only food you get to eat while high <clears throat> cool ranch doritos and salsa mm. that's two foods water no, you don't want water. Yeah, I want That's some water. That's the only dude. thing you can eat when you're high. Ice cream. Ice cream's the best. Is ice ice cream's the best no matter what? But like, ice cream's a very good answer. Yeah. Ice cream is so good. Ice cream. So, you know what? She's gonna like wake and bake is on ice Saturday cream a moment? And, and crush a pint. Uh, is ice cream getting reapexed? I don't think if we're doing like the pantheons of creams. Uh huh. Is is ice cream in the top tier? Because <laughs> you got cream, the band. Yep. You've got... The song, Cream. The song, Cream. <laughs> yep. Cash was everything around me. You've got Cream Pies, the donut. Yep. Cream Pies, and cream the pies, sex. The videos. Category. Yep. The category. And then after that, uh, Cream Abdul-Jabbar. Cream Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, uh, I think it's probably like... It's probably in my top five creams. Creams, yeah. Yeah. Cream Sickle oh, Orange what about, is pretty what good. What about Balco? The cream. The cream, and the, but you need the clear to make the cream. That's true. It's like it's a... a uh, it's Oreo. It's like yeah. a, a, a Brady Belichick thing. Yeah, yin and yeah. yang. But what's the question again? What would you eat? Ice cream. Pussy. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, bonk. Yo, I just <laughs> rewatched the old Barcelona video of Big Cat and Fights in the Demo Derby blindfolded race. My question is, oh, if you did it again, Hank. would you rather have Hank or Billy Football giving you directions? Uh, Billy. Not my best moment. Mm, not your best moment. You were you confused right and left a lot. Yeah. I was blindfolded and Hank had to tell me where to go, and it was a disaster. <laughs> well, it's like whose line is like? Do I go left? I was like right. What? Meaning like, wait, yes. what? It was like whose lines that you were doing a you're doing a bit? No, well that's how it played out. It was just kind of a shit show. Again, not, <laughs> not my best moment. Uh, we were facing the same direction, by the way. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the same left and right. Uh, has any other media member ever got mad about a joke you said about them? Oh, good question. Great yeah. question. Um, Rappaport did not like Leroy scooping him on the Gronk news. That's right. He texted Big Cat was like, why is why is everybody being mean to me online? Yeah. It's because a dog it, fucking yeah. beat you to the biggest scoop of the summer, bitch. Everyone was going after him. I'm trying to think. Who else have we... Have we... Well, I mean, I guess Rick Pitino would be if if it is him that's stalking me and PFT now. That would be it. I mean, I mean the, this is not your content. Was was all? Oh yeah, Reve- yeah, I mean, that's, he's a fucking weenie. He's such a fucking. Weenie. Did you see the Kyle Pitts thing? No. He nope. Got- nope. 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 All right, last one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Hank. That's that's our producer, baby. I mean, it, it's all oh. time. I can't believe this. Okay, no. 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 I saw it. 
Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Are we <laughs> going to get to see Coach Doug's lead Luis go to a national title this summer when we're stuck with just baseball for three months? Ooh, I don't know. What do you mean stuck with just baseball? Show, yeah. show some appreciation In the Olympics? For the Ever beautiful heard of it? sport. I think here's what I'll say about Doug's. I, at some point in, at some time, somewhere, he'll come back, but it won't be when you expect it. That's it. It'll just happen. And it'll just be like, hey, I'm doing, I, I, I actually, you know what? I'll say this, Hank, because we discussed this, the one day stream. That's what we'll do. The one day full season stream where it's just like fire it up, play a full season, and that's it. So we'll do that at some point, somewhere, sometime. Who knows? Uh, numbers. 37. 32. 8. 18. 73. 73, 73 from Bubba. 888. Eight, eight. Billy? I said 32. Animal fact? 32. 30. Yeah. Oh, 99. Oh, nice eight. cooler. We got a new cooler. Eight. Holy that's, shit. That's, this thing is awesome. That's the Coors cooler. Yeah. It's a Colorado Kool Aid cooler. 99. Yeah, T Rexes could actually do push ups with their arms. Because they could, like, push up? No, no. They actually would get up using their What is it? 71. Oh, Bob is so close. Damn, this looks so nice now that we're not, like, on a. Also, shout out Billy. He cleaned the uh, studio. I came in, and after, because we had that talk yesterday, I was like, oh, Billy showed initiative. And then Hank was like, no. I asked him to do it three times today. Yep. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>